for loose or aging skin. If you want your skin to look younger and tighter, do these three things. Get a high protein diet, believe it or not, lift weights, and get good sleep. The data is clear. Those are the three things that affect your skin the most. Improving those will almost inevitably improve the appearance of your skin. Is that true? Does that trump like like uh, vitamin E and the creams and all the stuff that they have out there? Yeah. Too? Really? Yeah. yeah. If you have a, okay, so obviously if you have a nutrient deficiency, you want to fill that first. But um, we'll start with the high protein diet. Um, your skin is made up of proteins, right? Collagens. Yeah. And this is why studies show that people who supplement with collagen protein have improvements in their skin is because they're they're using a protein that's high in certain amino acids. Um, that have been shown to benefit the skin. Now, if you'd have a very high protein diet, one gram of protein yeah. per pound of target body weight. Does that really matter? Like the the different uh, whey versus collagen? This it, I was just going to say, yeah, it does if you're not hitting those high protein targets. So if you're hitting one gram per pound of target body weight, you're overshooting, and that means you're getting all the amino acids that you need uh, to to for healthy skin. If your protein's lower than that, which most people's protein's lower than that, adding a scoop of collagen protein. Um, you know, has a lot of benefits. So high protein diet is very good for the skin. Now, is that also, is it, this have some correlation with marathon runners and why they don't have good skin? Is it because they're utilizing even the little bit of protein that they even eat, they burn all of it up to use for energy? You know, that's like, a Does good, that have anything to do with that? That's a good question. I wonder if it has more hmm. to do with just oxidative stress. I know and that exposure. is true. Yeah. But I mean, I would think if, you, if you're making the case the top three are what you just said and protein intake is one of them, I would imagine that someone who runs marathons not only taps into all their glucose, sugar, utilizes all that, but then also has to probably utilize some of the protein as a source, and they're probably not eating enough. You know, it's a good question. Underfed. I don't know what the marathon trends are now with diet. What they used to be was super high carb. Yeah. But I wonder if the if that space has now moved into the high protein. Um, I, that's well. obviously that's a bit of an overgeneralization yeah. for me to say that, right? There's always exceptions to the rule. Yeah. There's somebody who probably eats plenty of it, but I mean, like generally speaking, I remember training a lot of. Marathon I, I saw runners, the same thing. That's and, what I'm and, saying. And, yeah, and you would see that, and I and like I know, a fast aging of the skin. Yes, mm -hmm. and so I wonder if that's if this is one of the top three. You say these are the top three. That 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 there's a correlation there also could be you know the other part was about lifting weights obviously for a marathon runner you're not doing a lot of strength training you can't because of the amount of volume of training but I've talked about this on previous episodes strength training has been shown to uh, bolster and build the skin more than other forms of exercise because it signals uh, protein synthesis in the skin as well mm -hmm. so although all forms of exercise seem to if applied properly uh, improve the health of the skin strength training is a step further. And so like if literally if you're picking a form of exercise for skin, lift weights. Yeah, it seems the the skin needs to be aggravated just enough. Like you know, and I, I know that like strength training is great for that, but like you've seen products for beauty products where they're like they'll literally like roll spikes like on their skin just to get yeah. it to kind of respond, respond and get the healing response. Yeah. yeah. But it, it needs that little bit of stimulus uh, for it to really, you know, look youthful and healthy. There has, there has to be something to be said too about uh, as you reduce a bunch of body fat that you replace some of that with muscle mass so it's not just losing total mass. That's right? another side too. Yeah, if you lose a lot of body weight um, and you're, you know, especially if you lose a lot of weight and you don't, you know, firm up or build some muscle underneath it, there's just more space <laughs> underneath. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I so mean, that makes sense too. It does. The massive uh, weight loss, loose skin, uh, that one's up to debate in terms of what you can do to yeah, how do you? That. I know. That's that's one of the and it's only, you know, In my experience, I was just going to say, the clients that yep. you did it slowly, slowly. And, and built, built muscle didn't at the, have same the same time problem. didn't have that. No. Yeah, the challenge always was, was with the client who they came to me normally afterwards and they're mm -hmm. like, I lost 50 pounds of my own in the last couple months. And it's because they dropped so, so, so much weight so, so quick. And yeah. so anyone that I ever trained where we did it over a year, two years, and it was this slow kind of gradual weight loss. And as we lost body fat, we were also building muscle. They tend to not have that issue. Yeah, I noticed the same exact thing with the people that I work with. It's like, uh, so I think speed of weight loss plus the butt muscle building. Yeah. Plus in common, I mean, plus what we're talking about, right? Because those clients that you train, you got them to eat a high protein diet. And they were strength training, which are the two first things that I, I mentioned, right? Yeah. Two things that that improve the elasticity, the health, the firmness, the, you know, I don't know, for lack of a better term, youth, you know, youthful appearance of the skin. And then the third thing is to get good sleep. That for sure, if you get bad sleep, and we've all experienced, anybody who's a parent knows what bad sleep does 
to your face. Like your skin, <laughs> you age so fast. You wear it right here. You totally yeah. do. And so good, you know, good sleep uh, makes a dramatic improvement in the health uh, and appearance of the skin. So those three things right there will take any skincare product and put them to shame because they have the biggest impact uh, by far. But the high protein one, that's a big one because a lot of people don't realize that that your skin is made of proteins. Yeah, I mean that's those are those are collagen matrix matrices. I mean those are two huge factors. I mean for anything involving the body is the proteins, the building blocks. You know that's what mm -hmm. you're going to get to help kind of replenish and, and rebuild cells, and then you know and then you need to regenerate, and so you need sleep. You know what's interesting about what I'm saying here? We all worked in gyms for a long time, for decades. And anybody who's worked in a gym for a long time will see will, knows this. They've noticed this. You notice the members that you have that seem to look more weathered and seem to age a little faster than other types of members. And I remember noticing this with my strength training members versus my group X or cardio members. Yeah. The strength training members who were older, you know, at the time, you know, I was a young trainer, but I, they were in 40s, 50s, 60s. They just looked yeah. younger. They just looked younger on their in their faces, and it was the protein and the strength versus training. the leather and weathered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Sort of, you guys yeah. notice the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I noticed. I think that's a super common thing that you notice, and I, it has to do with what I'm what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. But back then, we couldn't put our finger on it. We didn't know what it was. We just noticed, like, God, they look so much younger. What is it? But now the data will show it's protein and strength training. Strength training was a surprising one for me when I first looked that up. I didn't realize that it literally builds the skin. It's a it's like a signal. For the butt, it's an anabolic signal. It says build, and this protein synthesis signal mostly is localized to the area that you're training, but it also becomes systemic. Well, you know what's funny skin. about that is uh, we we're so concerned about muscle too, but like think about like what it does to the bones and the skin, right? You know, in in conjunction with that, because yeah, you're expressing that contraction, and and both you know your skin and bones benefit from that. You do, and so when with the when uh, you know I've cited the data before. So I don't know if you've ever noticed this. But, well, I, so I had a lot of older clients at one point, and a lot of them would hire me, um, and they they hadn't been working out for years and years or, or never. So I was like, okay, you're really really deconditioned. We're going to start getting you to you know work out, and they were you know a lot of them were in their late sixties, but I had some in their seventies and some in their eighties even. One woman in her nineties, and they would always. They would talk to me about how easily they could damage their their skin, how it became so fragile that if they bumped into something, they would tear or it's like really get thin. Cut. Yeah, yes. I noticed that with older people, it gets or, real thin, or they would bruise very very easily. Um, and that, that's not from like a nutrient deficiency. It, aging, I mean, it, aging. It, you know, it could be, but you know, at this point, uh, you know, they would work with functional medicine practice. There was nothing mm -hmm. glaring. Of course, their health wasn't great to begin with. Uh, that's why they were hiring me. But um, I do remember one woman in particular who, up until this point, she had watched her diet and she had walked, but she never really worked out. She hired me. She was very much into how she looked. She used to, you know, she used to be a real estate agent back in the day. And she told me that she noticed her skin was tougher. That's what she told me. She's like, I used to cut my skin so easily and it would feel <laughs> so. But since I started working out, and at that time, I didn't know how to explain such it. such random feedback. I had, I right. Know, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you're looking you back, never know. You, I start remembering all these things that these people told me. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's what was happening. Now, the, these are these are three, the top three controllable. How how much does genetics play a role with stuff like that? Huge. Because you always you have that case of like you've seen the lady who had just for she was pregnant and she had like a big old belly and then went all the way back to normal. Yeah. No stretch marks, no yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. And then you have other other people that feel like they were rubbing the creams on, they were doing all this yeah. stuff like that, and they still end up getting stretch marks and stuff like that. Is it a lot of that? Is it still just ge genetics play the largest role still? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what the data shows. There's things you can do that'll that'll change that'll help that. But there's a, my wife's like that. She had both kids and not a single anything, not a single stretch mark or whatever. If I I, I gain or lose five pounds, I'll get stretch marks. So yeah. if I ever had got pregnant, which <laughs> I won't, but <laughs> never know. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never say yeah. never. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dude, springing a pregnancy. Okay, I did. I'm so glad you said that. It just reminded me of this stat I saw. Do you guys know what the uh, number one cause of death for a pregnant woman is? 
Ooh, you guys are gonna trip out when you hear this stat. I did not. I did not know. Leaving hard. out. I don't know. Number. What is the number one cause of death for pregnant women? Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, you're not gonna get it. Malpractice. Uh, not gonna get it. Is it? That's is, a, actually that's a good guess, Justin. Actually, I have a tough. I, I mean, don't like this game. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it violence? Is it that they get? It's homicide. Homicide. I knew it. Oh my god. Is that yeah, fucking crazy? Really? Or what? That's I knew dark. It. It's hella dark. That's Ugh. dark, dude. Isn't that great? That's the number one reason for death from pregnant women. Wow. It's homicide. Wow. That's terrible. So I was watching. You guys remember the Lacey Peterson story? Yeah. That just came out on Netflix, the whole the whole series on it. And so- Refresh I, me on what happened there. So that was, was that was the pregnant woman who disappeared, her husband, Scott Peterson, and they're from Modesto for where I was from. Right. Um, he, he was the, he's what they thought did it for sure. But he was like, claimed that they just came, he came home from a boating fishing trip and she had disappeared. Nobody could find her. And, uh, long story short, it, that he basically got, uh, accused the body washed up like mm. or half of her torso and stuff. Oh, washed up, I remember now like yeah. month, like a month or two later or whatever like that. And so they were able to connect it to him and stuff like that. Um, but man, the, I, that, that stat came up in the story. Mm. And I just had, I had no idea. I mean, I thought it would, I actually would have guessed something like malpractice or some other, some other cause or reason, but that's the number, the number one wow. reason for death from pregnant women is mm -hmm. homicide. That's terrible. That's a terrible stat. Makes sense though. Cause a, a woman who's pregnant, typically young, so it wouldn't be age related. Uh, women don't typically die of illness when they're pregnant, although it's a higher risk, but violence would make sense because there's a lot of cases where you, know, you don't want you to be pregnant. I want you to have a kid. That's what that was theirs, right? So his... You know, he was, he was, they, and this all, this is how he ended up getting convicted was because later on they find out that he was he cheating with somebody else. And he was, you know, and they got recorded phone calls of him saying how much he loved this other girl and this and that. He, the, the other family openly knew that he didn't want to have a child with her and then they got pregnant. And so, like, there was so many things that pointed in that direction that this this dude would actually attempt to do something like that. You have to be a special piece of shit to kill him. Not only that, that, but then to do that and then to be in front of the media and to put on a face like you're innocent. Sociopath. And, oh. Yeah, you're a sociopath. Crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, That's crazy. Terrible. And if you watch the whole thing, I mean, obviously it's I don't want to watch that. It depresses me. How do you yeah. watch that without feeling yeah. messed up? I, you know, I like the real life murder case stories. You I like know. those too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Cor do. Courtney's around board. With I you do. There. I do I'm, like those. I don't know why. I don't Women know what... love that generally, yeah, huh? It just bums me out, dude. Yeah. yeah. I can't. It makes me sad. It makes yeah. me feel weird. Yeah, yeah. We can't. So we can't end the night Unless on that. Unless it's cult. Right. So if like... we, we, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. right. You like, no. I like scary ass twisted yeah. movies, <laughs> but at least they're fake. I'm not trying to watch real shit. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Murder, murder cases, murder cases do interest me. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why, but I do, I do. Is it because you're trying to figure out what happened? Yeah. I think that's what it is oh, yeah. i think that the, that's the same reason There's why I, sleuthing. I like i like <laughs> movies that are like that I like a movie that fools me right i love yeah, a movie yeah. that can like i'm trying to figure piece it together mm. and so i guess that's the part that i'm probably interested in as i'm watching the the docuseries i'm going like well they should have been able to connect these dots or it's got to be him like mm. and i actually had forgot a lot of that story i remember when it happened it was so big like it made mm -hmm. news yeah everywhere. i didn't remember any of that story i remember like you you mentioned that and i'm like oh yeah that was huge news back in the huge. day but i don't even remember the huge how it all was went it down. 90s was it in the 90s or early 2000s it was uh 2000 and four or five don't okay. quote me somewhere like 20 around years the, ago. yeah it was about 20 years ago um and it was on christmas eve that's why so the reason why oh, the wow. story got so big was because it was christmas eve and news was quiet and so they had heard this missing person on on christmas eve and so a bunch of these reporters were like well nothing else going on so they like went out to go find it. Pretty, pr pretty couple, young, pretty couple. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. It, it literally it was something that the, the news kind of created into something as big as it was. Now, granted, probably ended up c catching the victim because of that, because it could have easily got buried because the initial the fi findings was she's missing. And they didn't think that he was guilty. And I think a lot of the questioning came from the media and the media going like, wait, wait, wait a second. This is all the husband has for an alibi. Yeah. What is he saying? Like they kept pushing the agenda. And then that was what kind of caused a oh, deeper investigation. Crazy. So you can go to sleep after that. Yeah. No, Katrina always put something else on. What do you want? So what's your before bed? 
because that's Jessica too. If we watch something a little bit too intense, yeah, we have to finish with uh, typically stand up comedy. Otherwise, she can't oh, go yeah. to sleep. Oh, I always do ancient aliens before I go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love it. more weird shit. Yes, <laughs> dude. More weird shit. Just weird and like doesn't make any sense, Just but it's like comforting. You, you know? Know? Yeah, it's like mm. yeah. Maybe I might get abducted. Maybe not. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I feel fun. like that, that would make me sleep very well. Hey, I just read I just read about the one of the most famous alien abduct, abduction stories ever. It happened in Australia. I'm guarantee you know about it. There was a couple Australia, I can't okay. remember the name. Maybe Doug can look it up. There was a couple who they were at home, they had a, a business associate come over, another woman, and they were doing work and then they all went to bed and there was a crazy storm happening at the time. The wife or the girlfriend was on the couch watching TV, ended up falling asleep. In the middle of the night, the other woman gets up because of the storm and walks into where the TV room is and sees a blue, the windows open and a blue rectangular beam is shining in the window and the, and the woman who was on the couch is floating through the window in the beam. <laughs> and she's like, oh shit, screaming. The guy wakes up. They both come out. They can't find this woman. They don't know where she is. She's like, I saw her fly out the window. The, hus the, the husband or boyfriend's like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. They can't find her. Because they can't find her, they call the police. The police show up. This is why it's the craziest story. The police show up. They can't find this woman. Hours later, they get a phone call from 500 miles away. And it's the woman who called and is like disoriented. Like, I don't She's know like, how I'm I here. I transported over here. I don't know how I'm here or whatever. And so this became this huge like story. Like, how did she go from there, there, you know, 500 miles away? Yeah. You've heard that story. I'm sure I have. But okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember it right now. Yeah. yeah. Did you find it, Doug? I think it's uh, Kelly Cahill. Is that it? Is that right? It I'm was in sure. like, Queensland, I think, or it was in Australia. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to do a little bit more research anyway, here. Anyway, that's a crazy story. How do you explain that? <laughs> that is crazy. That is. I, so I always want to know the backstory of the people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. What like, were you guys doing before that? Well, yeah. we were dropping I, I thought I saw a comedian making a joke What's about their mental it. It's always like, like yeah, yeah. Well, it's always like somebody who's off or does drugs yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, the aliens never abduct somebody. We were having a normal night eating my yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, aliens yeah, abduct you. Okay. Yeah. They're like, so, yeah, that's what, that, I forget how the comedian did it. I obviously yeah. would butcher it, but he did it like a good stand-up on basically being like the, how smart and strategic the aliens are. They always abduct somebody who nobody's going to believe. It's yeah. always yeah. just like, of course it's that person. You know well, saying? that's when it gets weird when it's like an astrophysicist or it's like, you know, some uh, military general uh, that has an account and then you're just like, okay, wait, this guy isn't like an idiot, you yeah. know, like and, and obviously it's either one or the other. Now you're like, so, maybe this is just like, you know, misinformation or like they're trying to like throw some like distraction, you know, at us or it's like a real account. Did you listen by, oh, by the, by the way, another piece of the story, she had three triangle marks or tattoos on her, I think her hand and her, like these marks oh, that wow. were on her, they couldn't explain. Yeah. What? Okay. Rogan just interviewed, who did he just interview? The, the, one of the PayPal mafia guys, what's his name? The what? You know, you know, like you had Elon Musk and you had, was it Larry Page? Is that the other guy? I might I think know. of the wrong name. Anyway, he interviewed somebody. Hopefully someone can find out who it is. And they started talking about UFOs. Okay. Because you know Rogan will bring yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, he, he does that. And I can't remember the guy's name was on there. Really smart guy. He was part of the PayPal startup. Uh, you know, it was a tech Oh, Peter guy. Thiel. Thank you, Peter yeah. Thiel. So Peter Thiel was on there and he goes, you know, and he had this crazy theory. He says, if you possess the technology for faster than light speed travel, interstellar, interstellar travel, right? you immediately have the power now to completely dominate the universe. Like if you have that, you can now very easily, because how could you defend that? If you could travel faster than the speed of light, there's nothing you could do against getting taken over. He goes, so either these are, either they're completely angelic beings or they're demons. So he's making the argument it's angels or demons. <laughs> because if this were like, true wait, wait, and they had, what's the logic behind that? So he says, if this were true and they were like, what we know about biology is you always do what's best for yourself. You're always trying to make your, you know, move yourself forward yeah. at the expense of whatever else he goes, if that's what they are, then they'd be taking over the universe. We'd be tyrannized right now, but we're not. So he's making the argument that they're either angelic beings, angels, or they could be demons. So he's making the argument based off of the, just the technology alone. That was a kind of interesting 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to listen to that to yeah. you know, get full context. That's that's hard for me to just, wrap my head around <laughs> right now. I mean, <laughs> you know, you just said something that made me want to ask you. So I've been wanting. I would probably normally ask you privately, but fuck it, we're on the podcast. Oh, so I'm gonna ask you anyways. Put no, you on the spot. Do, yeah, just don't you know. Do okay, so people. how is your your spiritual journey that you're going through right now? Yeah, being such a heavy science slash evolution guy mm -hmm. who draws back to using that as the basis of many of your arguments, how is that holding up for you right now with learning what you are learning? Because a lot of the things that you have said for a very long time, like it, like even what you just said right yeah, now, yeah. like you know, that based off of that, we, we always want to do what's better. Well, yeah. That, yeah, that's the theory of evolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't necessarily believe all of that is true now, or are you somewhere in the mix? Like there's yeah, a, no, I don't some sort of a, a mix of both? Yeah, like I, You know, I think they're totally compatible. I don't think, uh, at that's, the end of the day, yeah, at, at the end of the day, you, 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 you believe in a miracle. So either you believe everything came from nothing, that's a miracle, or you believe that the, in the spiritual, um, you know, beliefs, which is also involving a miracle. Right, so right. I don't see why evolution couldn't be created by, as a you know biological process by uh, you know a higher power yeah so i don't see them as being you know uh, like like they, they're they're not like compatible. mutually exclusive yes i don't see that at all yeah i don't i don't necessarily I, i've always believed the same thing too that i don't think that one necessarily proves or disproves the other yeah. i think that there's a, a a place for both of them to coexist but i mean i think sometimes when you have like this this purely evolutional base you tend to use that as the argument for why all these things that happen. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you believe in this spiritual realm or world or God, yeah. that would trump all powers at B, right? Sure. Like if he, he decided it wanted to be this way, he could make it that way. Sure. And so therefore that could totally I, throw I, a, a wrench. In well, a I also the, think like if we were, okay, if humans, if we acted based off of our um, animal needs, uh, we wouldn't be doing very well. So a lot of the, the morality that we take for granted now, it's especially fighting our animalistic tendencies, especially in the modern Western world, which a lot of, was, was based on the Judeo-Christian principles. It just was the Western world was based off these principles. A lot of those counter your natural instincts. Your natural instincts are violence, greed, uh, to seek pleasure, to you know get what's yours. You know that kind of, all the stuff that we know is not good. So. Um, yeah, I, th I think there's a there's that side of us, the the human, the flesh side of us, and there's a spiritual side of us which looks above and beyond that. So, but if we were living like animals, I mean, would you want to live in a world like that? So, have you I think not? It's already so enough that way. During this process, have you has there been nothing that has been uh, upended or changed for you? Or you still feel exactly the same way you feel, like evolutionary speaking, right, and science based. Is there nothing that has made you question that, like dinosaurs or things like that? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is where it's going. <laughs> I, you know, you know it's like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. no, no, no. But it, it, anything, anything like that, that maybe before you felt like oh, I haven't I, gotten there yet. Okay. I, I'm still at the part of like you know how you know how how I can get closer uh, to God, how I can move my family in that direction, what that looks like, and, and how that affects me. I'm, I'm not at the part yet where I'm trying to explain everything. Uh, okay, yeah. and I don't know if I ever will. You know, yeah. when it gets that part, you know. Oh, I'm sure you will. You know, I mean, it's, in, a, your, it's in your DNA. May, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I don't, I mean, I'm, I know I'm not going to have the answers. That's for sure. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's part of it, right? Yeah. I yeah. Mean. Well, I don't know. We've had some interesting talks, like even just trying to explain uh, string theory and quantum physics and like what they're finding with that. Like it, it always uh, ends up more esoteric than like totally. staunch science, you know, that you're, yeah. you're dealing with. So it's like, you end up, that's almost the spiritual side of science. You know, it's like, we're, we're trying to theorize uh, purpose and meaning uh, through all these connections and like how everything's interacted and, you know, uh, affects one another. And it's like, there's, we're, we're just seeking that, that, that origin point, you know, and that origin point is really where everybody's sort of stuck. Yeah. It's just interesting to me because I mean, the first piece that really got me to go, Whoa, there's some, this is weird there's weird wisdom in some of these teachings was the realization that they weren't logical in the sense that um, no human would have been, would have come up with, for example, I've brought this one up many times. There's nobody that would have come up with the idea of uh, hu every human being made in the image of God. Therefore we all have inalienable rights. That doesn't make any sense. Look around. Does every, anybody look equal in this room, let alone the world that makes no sense. You know, what makes sense 
No, I'm the ruler. Better. You do what I say. I got this. You got that. I'll take yeah, that. I'm he, bigger, you're stronger, dumb. You're smart. Smarter. You're yeah. You're yeah. beautiful. You're ugly. Uh, you're you know you can't run as fast as like it's not a logical thought process, and yet it it, it it arose from the spiritual practice that led to what we often take for granted, which is these societies that largely treat people far better than you know people have been treated before, and has led to continual progress. That's not a that's not a normal natural thought. There's no way any of us would come up with that if we all just all of a sudden were born into this world. Nobody would have been like, "Hey, I got an idea. Yeah, let's protect everybody's you know rights." What are you talking about? John's not doing shit over there. I'm going to take his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so I, that's when I was like, "There's some weird. There's some wisdom here that doesn't come from us, in my opinion, because I don't see how anybody can." You don't think you don't think a, a brilliant philosopher could have been sitting around with his family and stuff like that, and they got seven kids, and they're doing like, how do I how do I think this through and 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 protect and save my family? Like, okay, maybe every, if I got everybody to be nice to each other, you don't think that could be a about problem. maybe your family, but sure. not everybody's family. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's a really non logical, if you really think about it, non logical thought. Mm. You know, a lot of this stuff and a lot of stuff you'll read in spiritual um, practices don't seem very logical, and there's spiritual truths, by the way, that span. All, all kinds of different practices, not just the one that I, you know, the one that I follow. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. you, you know, earlier we were talking about aging. You know what I just learned? That So I was up in uh, Truckee this weekend with uh, my cousins and my brother, and we're all having a good time. And, you know, part of the way we have fun is we make fun of each other. It's a good time. And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, my brother's, you know, poking at me, and he's like, bro, it looks like you aged so fast the last couple of years, and he's trying to make fun of me. And Damn. I make fun of, yeah. And we're just laughing and stuff. And I'm like, you know, you just wait. Because he just he's about to turn 40. So my brother and my brother-in-law, about the same age, are about to turn 40. And I said, you know, there's something weird that happens right around your early 40s where you do notice that you just, something accelerates. Yeah. And and my cousin, my cousin who's my age is agreeing with me. He's like, oh, you could just wait, right? Yeah. Like, we sound like the old guys. You just wait. Yeah, yeah. I literally just read an article, wasn't looking for it. Scientists have identified two times in your life when, so you know how we go through growth spurts as kids? Yeah. There's aging spurts. Really? Yes. Where you're, you're, the way that your body ages seems to accelerate and go through this little like sprint. Oh, that's oh, interesting. Man. And it's early 40s oh, and wow. early 60s. Dude. Is that true? Early. Huh? Now think about it. When you think about people, yeah, yeah. when they reach a certain age and oh. they start to, ooh, they look really, they look starting to look no, a little older. No, I felt that. And it's funny because like Courtney's kind of going through it. She's, just turned 40 recently and like 41, I think now. But uh, it, it was like waking up, there's all these new pains. And it's like, oh, my knee hurts. And then this hurts. And I was just like, <laughs> you know, I can't help. I can't help it. Yeah, I've, I've been there, you know, like I understand like it's all new, but it's like, it's funny to hear because she was making fun of me forever. Like, you know, just complaining about these like little aches and pains and groans. And because it's just like, it wasn't there before. You know, it was like, <laughs> you're just like, why? Like, why is this all of a sudden a thing? And uh, she's, yeah, going through that. It's funny. Like, you <laughs> yeah, mentioned, I'll have to mention that to her. Yeah. But, you know, we think of people that you know. Isn't it true? Like, once they, know, so 40, those are the two age groups. I know, right? 40 yeah. and 60, do, I do feel it, like that. It feels for sure. different. You're scaring the shit out of Doug right now. Yeah. Doug just, <laughs> Doug's already through. Yeah. That's yeah. I've already gone through Doug's one of those. Yeah, when's the next one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he needs a, he needs death. Actually, I felt like 50s was when that happened for me. Did it? Yeah. Well, you're 10 years behind everybody. You age so slow. Yeah, yeah. So yours is gonna happen in the 70s, maybe. Maybe that's what's maybe, happening. maybe. Yeah. That's not a bad deal though. I know. When you told us your age the other day, I don't believe you. I didn't I know. either. Katrina and I got an argument over it. He's like, that's not how old he is. I have his birthday. I'm like, yes, it is. What are you talking about? He told he's the one who told me this isn't like yeah, I think he knows. Else. Yeah, exactly. I think I know. You know, I, mem you. Memory goes I as joke well. so much, right? I tease about him being yeah. so much older that I actually thought he was way younger. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, Doug's only yeah, really yeah, Doug's like, like 83 or something, or something like that. right? Yeah. And she said, no, it's not he's not 55. And then he's brought that up when we were walking. I thought, oh my God, no. he's almost 60. I am 85. No, we're not gonna give out. We're always gonna keep it a mystery. No one's yeah, gonna yeah. know. 95. But just, yeah. just under 95. Just under 95. Higher than last time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was babysat by Moses when he was little. Yeah. It was actually. A <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you right now, there was a point when we first started this that I, I've, and I know I've said it, like, and I think we've actually done it. I think we've passed that. Where I was like, there's going to come a time. Where if no one knew our we'll age, start to catch they up. That, that, well, that no, <laughs> that they wouldn't guess Doug is the oldest. I'm pretty sure we're there now. I'm pretty sure we're at a point now. If we all lined Dude. up, you don't know who we are. We're strangers, and someone had to guess who's the youngest of the oldest. Uh, I don't think Doug is going to be pointed out as the oldest. So Dude, I just got my. I went to pick up my daughter. She's with us this week, and her mom's like, "Oh, I found some old pictures of yours that you know, I was cleaning out the garage." So she gave me a bag. I said, "All right, cool, but I'm home." I did I, one time. I did it one time. It's most 
it's one of the things I'm most embarrassed about. I did these like little short modeling pictures, right? I had this photographer take pictures of me. Never did anything oh my with God. them. How old were you? It's 20, my mid twenties. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and no, I will never show you guys. Yeah. For <laughs> I, sure. You'll I take a need picture to of see it. Them. Never. But I was showing Jessica, on, she's dude. looking at him. Yeah, dude. And I'm looking, I'm like, what a baby. I got this little baby face, you know, with all this dark hair. That's like, so oh my funny God. that you did that. So literally yesterday. Were you at the mall? Katrina no, got. No. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, what's that ball? Like place? on a stage? No. Remember they had like competitions Clamor for that? Or oh you'd my like, God. Yeah, be a model. And they would just like take pictures of all no, these kids. Bro, and they're the embarrassing because I'm actually, yeah, no, I was actually trying yeah, yeah. to look sexy, bro. Yeah. I was trying. <laughs> and I'm looking at them now. I'm like, God, please, oh, God, don't let these ever go. God. Oh, I need I, to see so these. Katrina, no. just, Katrina just got a box. Who gave it to? Someone just gave her, her mom, I think, gave her a box of like old pictures that she had. And she had some stuff before that we were, to, so before her and I together, she had some photos of me that were in there. I'm like, how do you, why do you even have this? She's like, because you were going to throw them away. And I kept them. I'm like, yeah, I know I was going to throw them away. It was in Baker's wedding. So this is like 2000 and I want to say like five or so, somewhere in there, 2005 or seven. So almost 20 years ago. Yeah. So 20, about 20 years ago. And I remember, I remember this after seeing the picture, like, oh my God, the photographer, uh, I was in pretty good shape around that time. And the, the lady photographer was getting Mark and I to do all these like, like sexy poses for like these what? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a photo of Wait, me together well yeah like we we're together taking them but they weren't like us like I was gonna say, yeah it's yeah it's like level, you know he's double shooting, trouble yeah. you know, like, there's like a photo of me like Thunder. laying in the sand you know what i'm saying what? yeah dude <laughs> and like in like you're like what? small like, yeah, dude, it's like, were your feet and, up and, i don't like, know crossed? yeah no they weren't crossed but uh, they were up and wow. i'm like and i'm like laying like this like looking up at the camera in All the like, like part this, water so part sand yes dude i'm like why why this is how people get talked into shit you know well you know why you guys just hitting when your egos together you think yeah. you look good too. That's it, like, your yeah. ego. And the Feeling photographer's myself, like, oh, like, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's like, oh my God, cool. I want to do these with you. And I'm like, okay, yeah. You yeah know? Bro. Okay, <laughs> now you guys go run in the water, but slow. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, real slow. Yeah. Can you drive? No, off? we did shit like that. Walk it, walk it back out of the water. Oh, yeah. No, you didn't. Yes, bro. Oh. Yes. Splash uh, each other. No, one of mine, <laughs> one of mine, the, the, the photographer's like, bring you, this is when I was doing jujitsu. She's like, bring your jujitsu gate. We'll do some photos. In your gear. I'm like, cool. So she's like, open it up. I like, open it up. I'm like, wow. Try. Yeah, dude, I look at the photo. My daughter saw him. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, so I, bad, oh, I used to, be able to I'm talk a more shit with to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever do something wrong, I'm going to show all your friends with your dad <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and his gi with the blow it up, put it on the wall in the house. Yeah, and you just said that. I'm, I'm literally like surprised I made it out a heterosexual. What? What? <laughs> what? That, wow. I grew up. That took a left turn. Listen. <laughs> listen. Wow. I grew you up loving jealous, to wear huh? wigs. What? Yeah. Like when I was in preschool, like I would like love wearing wigs. I like put like dress up. You know, that was like my thing. Preschool? You remember? Yeah. You got to choose your clothes in preschool? Y you did. You had like a whole closet and they had this whole section where you just like grab like costume stuff, throw it on. You like, like the wigs? I was like the, hey, oh, I'm, the I'm a character. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, at the school. And then like. <laughs> was I was it like, it? your parents had a closet what full of your, wigs? That's just my wigs? thing. Like you guys have your modeling stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't questioning my sexual. I wasn't <laughs> questioning yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. Neither was I. Yeah. I was kind of yeah. feeling myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I was feeling real yeah. hetero. Though. I don't yeah. know about you. I'm just saying, I'm real comfortable. Knowing Are those photos anywhere? There are. Yeah. There's, there's some of those. See, those are be honest if you're a little kid those yeah, are embarrassing because yeah, okay. you're cute bro i was in my well, 20s my yeah, reason why bringing that up is because like you know nowadays like they'll they try and like usher me into like some camp oh, that's a good point right yeah, away yeah, you yeah. know you'd already like, be in the other bathroom completely by opposite you know it's yeah. not even you know but it i went through a phase <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a whole phase <laughs> whole phase of, of wigs <laughs> i'm not sure you grew out of that i'm pretty sure you wore a couple of wigs here didn't grow out of it yeah. completely well so you love doing there. that shit How, so it reminds me about yeah, it was just like a goof did you never do drama you know, I, I did it one when in junior high, I, I was in a play and it was the first time and I had to be in a high school play. And I was like, oh my God, this is like terrifying because like it's all the older kids yeah. and you're this young kid that, and I was like an extra. And then like one of the performances, they're like, we need somebody. And I had to like throw in this costume, just go out there and like riff and like improv. Uh, and it was like Alice in Wonderland. And so I was out there as like this uh, the red knight or the white knight or whatever. And mm. I was talking to, I had like two lines, but then we ended up like sword fighting and one of my swords broke. And so I like, everybody's laughing. And then I was like, I had to make a joke like that. My sword wasn't as big as his, but I could fight 
you know, use it really well. <laughs> so I said something That's like sorry. that, you know, and then everybody's like, ha ha. I got like a joke out of it, but then I, I was just like, so terrified. Like Dude, that I just was like a win. Ran off the stage. A what win. a great joke on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, but For that, a that's, high kid? yeah, it was it was totally like I was like ah oh, terrified oh, like say something. Was popular. You became popular after that. <laughs> no, that's why. Right. And then yeah. I became did fart you, boy. Did you that. ever do that? No, Wait, hold on. No. What? Hold on. Back <laughs> up for a second. You're not gonna let that go. You became fart boy. I told you guys this story already. Where like one of my friends backstage, he grabs like to to pick me up and like you know. Uh, he squeezed me too hard. And he <laughs> squeezed I don't me in story. Just, dude, I, I ripped one in front of all these cute girls, and wow. it, it was mortifying. And you the next day, like boy. everybody's laughing, ah, ah, ah. and then um, I show up to school, and we're like, hey, it's Fart Boy, and I'm no. like, oh god, no, it'll be Fart Boy, dude, forever. <laughs> that was your <laughs> I thought for sure that was gonna stick, like forever, dude. I don't, I don't, oh. remember. I don't remember that. Oh story. my god, dude, I was terrified. <laughs> that was a good, dude. Great. Uh, speaking of plays, this is so funny. Like I, I was like, I have another like docu series that I watched. I did. I literally just vegged out the last. Day. I was so tired of driving for the, over the weekend that I just wanted to sit in my room and just watch TV. And I watched uh, Kevin Spacey Unmasked. Mm. Have you guys seen that? No. Mm -mm. Fuck, you got to watch that. All right. Bro, I mean, hey, to go, the reason why I thought you just reminded that they go all the way back to like, you know, plays that he was doing when he was in, in high school and in college. And like, dude was a predator all the way back to like oh. high, high school days, dude. Oh, wow. come on. Yes. Well, wasn't his his dad was like abusive or? Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. His dad was like a Nazi and sexually abused his brother. And oh, my God. Yes. All kinds of stuff I did not know. Wow. And I did not know like what a predator he was. Wow. He was like, oh, crazy and got away with it for. Forever. No wonder he he thought he could get away with Still it. Still right? to this day. Oh, wow. he ain't doing no time right now. Wow. So you gotta yeah. watch the documentary. He's been, you know, he's been to court like three times from like like multiple cases of men saying that they they he sexually harassed them and he's won all of them. Wow. Yeah, and not like one person coming out like multiple people coming out accusing him it going all the way to court he wins in court again goes to court wow and, yes oh so he's just real yeah. scumbag yeah the only the only reason why you probably even know about it is because the big netflix drama that's right. netflix pulled him oh there was enough enough where netflix is like we're pulling him yeah, from yeah. house of cards wow. and they pulled him because of some of the cast from house of cards were some of the people that complained too being yeah. sexually harassed by him and like really sexually harassed not like uh flirting like grabbing men's dick like out wow. of the, uh, like yes crazy stuff wow. Dang. no idea i didn't know any of that i didn't Surprised know he never got yes. punched so that's what he yeah. he did it to a, 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 a army ranger guy and the guy didn't punch him no what? they all they, that's weird you know what Every, that's almost like instantly yeah, yeah I, like, that's okay so doing? i said the same thing to katrina how like i said how weird is it that at the very least hit him back in the you know so here's what here's here was the, the, the weird this is one of the things that her and i were like talking about she's like, like how does this happen to this many men and he never gets his ass whooped. Yeah. Like how does that happen? And yeah. he's not like like I said, they're not it's not it's passive. aggressive. It's aggressive. Right. Like really aggressive. On a lot of different like does crazy he have power over them with So like, like what it, what work? it is is almost all of them were like were trying to be actors and oh. stuff. And they yeah. they were they were in such admiration of him, right? In awe oh. of him. So they're probably confused. Yes, and a lot of them all said this they almost all said the same thing where they were like I felt like it was my fault. Ooh, yeah! Like they—they they felt like they—they they put themselves in those positions. Be, and well, think about this. You, and you've seen this before. I—it's I, hard for us to. I, this is why it's hard for us yeah, because man, none I'm of us are like. Well, no, like none of us are. None of us are starstruck people. No. Like, none of us. We've all talked about this openly. Like yeah. I don't follow like famous people. No, I, don't I don't think there's care. anything special no, about them. They're care. great at their craft. There's a lot right. of people that are great at their craft. Right. There's happens to be acting, singing, whatever. Not a, most people are not, or a lot of people aren't like that. A lot of people. Oh my God! They, he's a, he's this. He's that. Sure. He's so amazing. And so these were all these you know young men and stuff that were looked at him that way. And you mm. could see when they look at him that they look they look at him almost with those goo goo eyes. And he would see that, and that he would see that as an opportunity. Is like, oh, this is someone I could take advantage of. Oh, yeah. and so he would do that. And then a lot of times these these guys would be like. I felt like I I put my it was my fault I put myself in this situation and so they they all stayed didn't stay quiet and didn't say anything about it and of course weird. on the back yeah, burner going man I hope that I get a, he, I get an opportunity right I hope that he still will, will yeah. put me out there or put my name in the hat or like and so yeah they, they it's weird the amount is insane I just feel like I'd punch someone 
right? Like, <laughs> yeah, instinctually. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, but, just an instinct. Yeah, but you got to yeah. think about that. A yeah. lot of that has to do with why, because you don't you don't think anybody's special like no. that, right? You wouldn't look at somebody and like, oh, right, like, right, right, oh right, my right. God, he's so... But as someone who does look at somebody yeah, like that, yeah. it, it changes that. They have like a God complex about yeah, yeah, them, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Weird no, psychology. We're, very weird yeah. psychology. Yeah. And I, when we when the, the documentary was going and like each case was coming out, I was mm -hmm. telling, I said the exact same thing you guys was like, how the fuck does it? And then it got to like the army ranger dude. He's like jacked too. He's like yeah. super jacked, I mean, masculine dude. And he's just like. Yeah, you feel like he get. He, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Like how did you not just break? And he explains himself. Wow. He's like, I know a lot of people probably think because I'm this. But he's like, you know, he's like, you, you know, at that time, he's like, he was in his acting career. He's just coming out of the army and stuff like yeah. that. And he's like, you know, I really I feel like Sal will be confused if Elon Musk did that. You know? <laughs> no, I would not be. Right. I would not be confused at all. <laughs> not no, at all. I would not. Where do I like, go? What? Why'd you do yeah, that? Like, <laughs> what? Why? <What's> that? <laughs> hey, you know what? You just reminded me. We were talking about those those embarrassing modeling photos and whatever. I yeah. did try. I did send them out one time. And I did get a call from some creepy dude. <laughs> I did get what? a call. Yes. Oh, man. I think I told you guys. He called me and he goes, yeah, I'd like to have you uh, come up and we're going to have a bunch of guys come up and we're going to shoot for some athletic this, that, and the other. Oh, that happened to me. I told and you I that said, story. oh, cool. I oh, said, when's the date? Gave me the date. And I'm saying, cool, let me find a place for uh, for my wife and I to stay. He goes, oh, oh no spouses. Oh. I said, what do you mean no spouses? Women, uh, and he goes, we don't want any, any girlfriends or anything there. Just a bunch of guys, and he, and he said something like, <laughs> you know, messing around, wrestling and stuff. I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> noogies. I'm like, what are you yeah. talking about? Uh, no. That's true. Now, that happened to me. Early, in the early 2000s, there was there was these photographers that were would prey on personal trainers. Mm hmm they would and and the, exactly that pitch was this like and that, this had happened to me multiple times. We're just times horsing around. <laughs> they, <laughs> Anybody horse. uses that term? Yeah, horsing. No, that's it, it, literally it was almost. Uh, we must have probably thing. talked to the same person because this it was, was, it, was guy, it was a calendar. You was, and I would have showed a, up. It was a gay. That? It was a gay calendar. Well, you knew what on you were a doing. Saturday. No, that's how I found out later. Oh, yeah, because he had, he like offered like a modeling gig. Yeah, and said we pay you. It was like a thousand dollars a day, and I'm like, okay, I'm listening now. I had been offered like the ones where they tell you like. We'll do your shoot, and it only costs this much. It costs you money. Yeah, to go yeah, do it. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. okay, it's cool. That's bullshit, you know, yeah. yeah, Calvin Klein will call me when they're that serious, yeah. right? This guy actually was like, "Hey, we pay. Like you, you come out Saturday. We get paid a thousand dollars for a day of work. This and that." I'm like, "Okay, I'm listening. Like, I'll take a phone call." And so I took the phone call, and on the phone call, he was like slowly dripping the information to me, like, "Oh, we go to the beach and." How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable with your shirt off and some of that? I'm like, yeah, I feel comfortable with my shirt. What yeah, and it was I love like the breeze. What are, like what like what what about long, like down in your underwear? Is that okay? Like it was just like getting less. Little and by less. Little, yeah, like, a little this and it's like, like pausing. Huh? Yeah, are, are you comfortable with other people? And it's just like, okay, where yeah. is this going? Yeah. You know, what I'm saying it's like, oh, then later on at the it was like he talked to me for like a good 45 minutes before I like he slowly got you. <laughs> yes, he like slowly would ask me like quite like getting me just like a closer, getting me to say yes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, wait, no, wait a second, no, I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How do we get here? Yeah, 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 yeah. That took a turn real quick. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That happened to me uh, when I was 22 so like or a show. blanket. I would, <laughs> I would never. That's why it I was would, somebody in the gym though. Was it somebody who hit you in the gym? Um, no, no. Uh, I didn't meet the person. It was a phone call. So that's how it happened to me. So somebody else saw me. Told this guy, this guy, I can't called the gym and got me. That's how they got. Oh, me. And wow. I never Man, met him. I must him. have been an ugly kid, dude. I didn't get trained on at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were not hot, dude. Yeah, yeah. We were, yeah. It took a while for me to mature. You weren't hot enough for these guys. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. So that's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> anyway, yeah. good stuff. So, all right, we, we're supposed to talk about Legion. I wanted to compare their protein yeah, cookie. Yes, see transition. Know, that. Like that? Speaking of cookies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were delicious, like a yeah, cookie. Turn your cookies. Speaking off. of cookies, yeah, uh, I compared the protein cookie from Legion to the popular. What was it called Lenny Larry's? Lenny Larry's. Larry's. Yeah, Lenny Larry's. Oh, yeah. Lenny, yeah. See, it's at the so gas I, stations. Yeah, Dude. I actually ate some of those when I was going through a stint of like not having dairy and uh, was. Oh, not, they're dairy not free. Happy. Yeah, that's like vegan protein. Do you know what their top protein is in their protein in their cookie? No. Okay. The number one source of protein they use in it? Peas? <laughs> no. What? Wheat gluten. They oh actually add God. gluten to give you more protein. Oh, my God. No wonder it still gave me heartburn. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> why. That's exactly why. No yeah. way. Yes, dude. Oh, that's funny. Now, macro-wise, for the same kind of serving size, it's eight grams of protein. But again, it's wheat gluten is the number one source. Then it's pea protein. 
and then rice protein. The the Legion one, the number one source uh, of protein is whey protein. Say whey, yeah. yeah. Whey pro. In fact, that's the first ingredient: whey protein and milk protein. I I like the cookies. Yeah. I, I eat them. All and they're time. fifteen grams of protein. I was just to say, so it's each. fifteen grams, right? Fifteen grams yeah, in this one, almost double. The other one's a glorified cookie, bro. It's yeah. just a cookie. It's, just a, cookie yeah. with, it's a vegan yeah. cookie. Yeah. Splash. So that and you guys eat those all the time. I we go through them fast, very fast. Yeah, Both I, you guys yeah. have like one a day. I do, Which one's the best? Well, yeah, chocolate chip is the only one I've chocolate had. Chip. They have other ones. They have. I've been stealing maybe. them though for my kids. To be honest, do they have other ones, Doug? I don't know. Look it up. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, if they do, we have a, we have. I've so only I had one of their cookies. I had one because now you know I can throw dairy in every once in a while. Yeah. And I had one, and it's not bad. It's really good. Speaking of dairy, you guys want to hear a crazy, crazy? You'll never believe story ever. <laughs> okay. I DoorDash groceries up in Truckee, yeah. so we're all hanging out. We had a bit. We we grilled steaks. It was funny too because we had eight. We ate out earlier in the day, and so I'm with my cousins, a bunch of, you know, bunch of dudes, a bunch of dads hanging out, and uh, we're like, well, that's enough eating out. Let's just have steaks and vegetables, maybe some potatoes. We'll eat healthy. All right, cool. So we do that. And of course, we're sitting there, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to make this fun. I'm going to order some some treats. So I- Treats. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some treats. <laughs> Let's get some treats, yeah, guys. Delivered. So, uh, which I was really good. By the way, I was- I was, it meant I was, something different, like in your 20s, when yeah. you said something like that. You know what I'm saying? No, nothing like that, bro. <laughs> Food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sugary stuff. So I ordered a bunch of stuff. I got some some cereal that my cousin used to like when we were kids because I knew when we were kids he liked this really, this one particular type of cereal. I found it. Then I got like uh, you know ice cream for everybody, and then I got dairy free marshmallow mateys. No, mm. no, that was uh, we, that was golden the, grams. The poor version. Yeah. That was the poor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, golden grams. Oh, golden grams. Yeah. When we were kids, do you know what I found? Dude, I found cinnamon toast crunches. Like too much though. It's insane. It's, it's like too much. Finish your ice cream. Story. So, all right. So, sorry, sorry Justin. Just, he's you got, you got me down, down over there. He's getting hungry. Here. So, uh, I got dairy free ice cream. Now, what I forgot to do was the whole substitute thing if they don't find mine or whatever, but I didn't realize it. So, all the food comes. Everybody gets their stuff. Everybody's excited. My cousin's like, oh, you found Golden Grams. These guys over here eating Reese's, you know, uh, pieces, uh, you know, ice cream. And I have my little tub mm. of Ooh. ice cream that I thought was dairy free. So, I start eating it and I'm like, this is the best. Dairy free ice cream I've ever had in my life. I'm like, really? Like, this is not. I'm like, <laughs> this, I've never had dairy free ice cream that's so good. I'm like, and I'm like, I'm literally bragging about it to everybody how good it is. I'm like, this is so good. Wow. I can't believe how good it is. Finally, my cousin's like, are you sure it's dairy free? <laughs> I'm like, of course it is. I look at it. No, bro, regular ice cream. <laughs> I, hey, listen, I ate half. What, what's the small, what is, what is pint. that? Pint. Is that? Pint. I ate half. Oh, wow. Before I realized I ate. Now, ice cream for me in the past was. Yeah. Destroyed. How did you do? Fine. Really? Fine. That's crazy. Fine. Yeah. Literally fine. Yeah. I, I was so how waiting have you not for gone all the, the no way dairy back guy right all now. of a sudden. So what's that? keeping you from like. It, there's full... still a water retention effect. I, it's still not good for me, I can tell, because yeah, the next yeah. day I felt tight yeah. and I could tell it wasn't like great. Yeah. And that I would have still felt better with dairy free. Yeah. But it's not like, bro, if, in the past. And this is not exaggeration. If I if I had a teaspoon of ice cream in the past, I was not good for a for a day or two. Oh wow! Let alone just the next. You know, well, sidebar to this like uh, cereal sort of uh, uh, nostalgia. So I didn't know if I told you guys. My uncle actually worked for General Mills. Really, and wow. was part of the formulation of some of these uh, cereals back in the day. So I don't know if you remember, but there was an ET cereal. Yes. And it was just a limited time. Yes. And it was like Reese's Pieces yes. flavor. Yeah. So he was part of that whole thing. We got a box of it before anybody else. And we were like eating it. I was, that was ever... like such a brag. Uh, like I, I was stunting you know, all my friends like, dude, I got this cereal. And I was like eating it. Why didn't you never tell us this? How, did, how long have you known this? I've, <laughs> I've, I've known it for a long time. It just <laughs> wasn't relevant. So yeah, because Reese's had a- That's had... not the first time we talked about cereal. I know. It's true. This guy's like nine years. Know, nine years. I've been just like podcasting with him. Yeah, I yeah. just found my, out my he got uncle the first was the general cereal. formulation for General Mills. Yeah, my, no big deal. My uncle was General Mills. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, yeah, was yeah, the general yeah. in the mill. Uh, no, it wasn't that crazy. But <laughs> yeah. he, oh, we by the way, oh, when we were kids, Reese's Pieces were the were the was it was ET because ET ate them in the movie. Yes, with and then yeah. So that's yeah. What I, when it, I was a kid, I thought they was connected. Yeah. So, I mean, we did have a few in like, uh, he, he was responsible too for the French toast version of this, uh, uh, cinnamon toast crunch. Do you guys would, remember that? Yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. would love to be in a cereal meeting. 
<laughs> I know, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're just coming up Dude, with they'd stuff. wear like the white, uh, it's, I don't know, it's like this whole outfit from the 50s, a little painter hat thing. Like they, they like legit like oh, had yeah. a uniform and they all went to work and it was like very corporate and it was, it's weird. I'd actually love to hear what were some of the biggest bangers ever. I would like oh. to hear what, the, what, which ones never made it. Like what ideas did they scrap? That's what I want to know. Oh, I bet like, there's some like, amazing uh, ones. Like ketchup and mustard when they went black and stuff yeah, like that. Dude, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That was a massive uh, fail. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how many fail. They, they, probably a lot, bro. There's probably a ton of formulations that don't that don't make it, don't make it yeah. right? Well, yeah, you build these associations oh, and change cereal. it. Yeah. Doug had it for Watch the, the original oh. box is worth a million dollars, something like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Is. That's it right there. It was Look so at good. And then it got, it wasn't even close as good. They have the puffs now. They're terrible. Bro, tell me that's not the most iconic, what is that, 80s picture of all time? It's E.T. and Michael jackson oh, yeah. <laughs> together okay. <laughs> okay another sidebar you ever seen the uh product for et it had a finger that lit lights up yes like just <laughs> it's just a finger it's just a finger it looks like a, a dildo it looks nope, just it, we all, we i just all have there. to say yeah what it is it's a, it's a what is it it's a toy it was a toy it was, yeah, it was, it was a, toy, a finger. finger that lights up and vibrates <laughs> And it would, yeah, like a magic. No, it, I don't that's know if it home. It was just a finger. I, maybe it doesn't vibrate. I thought <laughs> that be, part yeah, you, added. you added. I added that. I'm pretty sure it didn't vibrate. I think it just lit up. I wanted to make it better. <laughs> <laughs> it looked Stupid, like it did. Dude. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these moms are buying these toys yeah, for the kids. Fly off the shelf. Crazy. Yeah, this is I don't, I don't hottest Christmas present ever. How many kids you have? Why'd you buy two of them? Yeah. Wasn't anyway. wasn't that like one of the most, uh, you know, General Mills over there? Wasn't that one of the most pivotal moments? And cereal was when they actually started putting toys in the cereal. Wasn't that like a big? That, that was, was like a big the, deal. Yeah, that was like the first like big like. And a dude. lot of them were associated with the cartoons, like Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, and they built these whole like brands with. Do they the still put toys in, in in cereal, or is there a choking hazard now? Somebody die. I don't know about that because I I, I don't would, remember like yeah seeing any. I would ruin a box of cereal to get the you know what I mean sure. where you go disappear and you'd see it. Oh, be all, it would disappear in the two thousands. Hmm. Why? Interesting. I think it's because of. A yeah, choking, choking hazard. It must be. Has so, to be. So Cause, yeah, I know. Come on. Because one, one dumb, dumb kid, kid chokes. Yeah, up. bro. It's like, That's the car. That's not know. a cereal. Piece yeah. of cereal. Yeah, yeah, Stop yeah, eating yeah. it. Yeah. Bad oh, parents. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You haven't taught your kids the difference between a Hot Wheel and a fucking it's, sugar puff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny died. He, yeah. Where's he, that kid today? He had you know? a car. <laughs> Maybe he should. Know. You know what? Some poor parent right now is gonna say who lost a kid. I feel so. I'm my sorry. We're making jokes right now. Like, oh sorry about God, that, everybody. I immediately regret that. Terrible, I terrible joke. Anyway, that. speaking of advertising, uh, I think Organifi has set a trend. Actually, I'm positive they have set a trend in the supplement space with Shilajit. Oh, 100 percent. Have you guys ever seen as many Shilajit ads? I, we well, not only that, we it have got. Around. You know how we get stuff sent here all the time. Uh, it normally doesn't make it to you, Sal, until we think it's even worthy of like it passing your the science stuff. Uh, I have uh, shampoo, soap. That's Shilajit. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Why? I think tea or honey. Uh, like the, Why? The, uh, yeah, just she, that's. That's like the so new, cool. Just, it is. It, you know, what it reminds me of. Trying to when, smash remember it when anything? we first started the podcast and we were talking about how everything had CBD in it. Yeah. Yes. I feel like Shilajit has become the CBD, the CBD of 2024. It's like wow. literally like that. It's like everybody is putting it's a, it. It's a great um, compound. It's got data to support it. Uh, but you want it to be sourced well, and I don't think washing yourself with it or putting your shampoo. Well, it just it again reminds me of yeah. the the yeah, CBD consume move. Consume it. Like yeah. it, obviously, it's got some good science behind yeah. it that support it because it wouldn't make its way into everything else. But now, just like anything else in the space, once there once we get some good science to support it, oh, it's like game on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's put it in. Brush your teeth can. with it. It's gonna work. I, I mean, always, I, I'm like so. I, I I I took home the soap. I've been like lathering myself up with this, like trying to figure out like is this working. <laughs> Should I feel something <laughs> right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to eat it. Yeah. Well, I was surprised. That's why when they first when Organifi first came out with the Shilajit, I was so excited because I was surprised no supplement company was really pushing it because it's a well known Ayurvedic. They are supplement. now. Mm -hmm. They are now everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Organifi definitely. That's is, their. By the way, they're that. Whenever we talk, whenever I talk to Drew, he's like that one just crushes. You know, it I wonder, sells out. I wonder if it, I think it just. I mean, what's the? There was a really good. Um, Netflix, uh, I think it was a TED talk that talked about like the, I think the three or five most uh, uh, top reasons why a business is successful. And number one was, is timing, timing of the market. You're sure. 
You know, so there's a it's lot a of factor. there's a lot of great ideas that never make it to anywhere that no one ever found just because of the, the timing was. And there's a lot of shitty ideas that end up being gangbuster because it yep. was just timed perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so I, I that has to be a, a big part of the, they just they hit the market. What's one of the most famous shit? weird stupid products that made someone millions of dollars that you pet think rock of. yep it's got to be the pet rock yeah that was the first like, that's a real thing that is people watching this right now i can't you're not familiar took off yeah somebody in the 60s was it the 60s i think then? it was more the 70s 70s is that when the pet rock was literally they just painted, painted rocks, rocks. No, no 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 it was just a rock it was it just a, even it was a rock painted at that point? you got a box with a rock in it and it was called <laughs> pet rock no i think they painted it 75. They painted eyes. Did they at least on it. polish it? Or, oh, did they put googly eyes on it? Yeah, yeah, they painted it. They, paint, uh, they did something. Let stuff me see, Doug. Pull up. I don't think so. Oh, you think they just sold the rock? It was just, just a went rock. Outside I never, and I never like, owned one. You never owned it because you weren't you allowed were, to have toys? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had rocks in my yeah, backyard. I had yeah, that's, that that's, that's what my dad would have said. What the hell? Yeah. You want rocks to go outside? I don't think. I think it was just a rock with some like nesting. Told you. Wow, look at that. Straw. Hey. So I've never seen Hold on. Hold on, listen. This like is, it's an egg. Four dollars. It's just crazy, bro. He invented. I like how he says he invented. Okay, the idea came about after Doll, the guy's last name was Doll, Gary Doll, was listening to his friends at a bar complain about their pets in 1975. He joked that he had a pet rock that didn't require any work. <laughs> oh my! His God. friends' reactions made him realize he was onto something. So he bought smooth Mexican beach stones for about a penny each, and then he packaged them in cardboard boxes with ventilation holes, straw bedding. He sold them for four dollars each. And he sold over a million and became a millionaire. That's so hilarious. That's so rad. Yeah. That's crazy. What a hustle. Yeah. Now imagine being his friend, right? Imagine <laughs> imagine if I came up to I him know. like, bro, I got this business idea. I'm going to sell rocks. I know. It's going to be pet rock. You'd be like, you're an idiot. Like what yeah. kind of rocks are we moving? Well, imagine like, how Columbia many rocks. <laughs> imagine right? how yeah. many stupid ideas came after that idea because that idea yeah. was so ridiculous. Everybody probably would, would probably go back to that and be like, well, I mean, they sold pet rocks. We could sell this. We could yeah. do this. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, timing, timing the market, man. That's a, a big part. Now it's now what's interesting about this. It lasted only six months and then it ended. Uh, but I wonder if owning an original one in its box would be worth a lot of money now because of oh, if iconic. it was an original, I bet you. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that holds value for sure. If you had something like that, that was one of the because that's true, iconic. Yeah. Yes. Oh, actually, look it up. It's There's probably culture, look up culture, original yeah. pet rock on eBay. I bet you somebody's selling it for good money. That, yeah. It's got to be because of only a million sold. That's still a limited amount. How do you how do you make how do you know if it's the original? I know just that's rock? actually a good point. Like there's you maybe the actually what would be worth money is probably the stupid box. The yeah, it'd have box. to be it'd it have to be, to be like in the box unopened. Twenty nine bucks. Uh, this just inflation right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's that's just how much rocks actually cost now. Yeah, <laughs> oh, they sell them. They you can still, still buy one. These? Yeah, it looks like you can get them on thirty bucks. Uh, Amazon for thirty bucks. Thirty, 30 <laughs> that's, bucks. For that, pet rock. That's inflation, dog. It was four dollars oh. in the seventies. That's about right, right? Seventies, oh, four dollars, Doug, a, to twenty nine. That's actually that's probably about right. That's yeah. about right for wow. inflation. Wow, they yeah. still sell them. I mean, and it says original. Okay, it's like I, a number. I kind of want to buy one. <laughs> hey, there's, there's look at how many reviews. How many reviews? That. How many people? Six hundred. Uh, Six hundred people, people reviewed rated it. this. You know who yeah. buys them now? I Four and a half stars. I bet you who buys oh, them now right. are boomers, right? Who grew up during that time. Yeah. Who are like it's nostalgic. Yeah. No, that's so a they good. probably buy it as a joke. No, that's a good guess for each other. It, no. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, look at it. my my son was happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a rock. <laughs> well, it's a rock. <laughs> you know, talk about things like this that hold value and investing and boomers buying. You know, you just remind me, this is my shout out today. So I'm going to shout this guy out. And I, I do want to um, caution <laughs> because he's he's definitely he's he's got edge he's a bit of an asshole um i like him i like it i like i Why like would you like that I, yeah i like people like I that because i'm, I'm a bit of that guy right? i'm saying oh, right maybe, like, yeah, yeah. Maybe. So, kind of like a little bit <laughs> he is in the uh, uh watch and exotic car space and he's been doing this for over 20 years and he, his instagram is i create millionaires now his his he became famous through basically trading up on watches and teaching people how to buy and flip them and sell them. And he's done the same thing in the exotic car market. Now I love his content because I follow that market and I'm paying attention to all those cars, but he teaches people. He has like a whole, uh, all kinds of like eBooks and stuff that are out there on how to target cars that are like older, that hold value. Mm. And so, you know, his argument is like, why would you with the average car payment at $700 a month, 
pay for some car that'll be worth nothing in 10 years from now when you could drive this Ferrari from 90 whatever and drive it for a year, basically turn around and sell it in two years and get your money back because of how the market- That's, that's, that's mm, a, I mean, that's a very- it's, makes a lot of sense. It makes it's a ton of, it makes a ton of sense. It's and it's brilliant. You just have and, to be able to afford a Ferrari. Yeah, well, an older one is reasonable. You can get How into much? uh well, you can get an older one in the eighties to a hundred thousand dollars, depending on the miles and stuff like that. So still still I mean it's comparing to a seven hundred car payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, which yeah, is yeah. a is seventy thousand sure. dollar car today, right? So that's the argument. Is that the average car payment now? Seven over seven average car payment in the United States right now is seven hundred and forty dollars. What's wrong with people? That's crazy. Seven hundred and forty dollars. Isn't that insane? That's crazy. That is by the way, that is the average, which means there's obviously there's, people there's half as above and yes. Wow. Yes. I mean, that's most that's crazy. You're, there was an article that I saw that There's was- kids with Teslas, dude. I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That, that is kind of weird. My kids in school, like, these kids at Teslas, I'm like, what? Yeah. Start with a beater. You know, like whatever happened to that? Dude, I was, the car that I started with was a hazard. That's how, that's how you know what I mean? Oh, I, yeah. I, it was dangerous to drive. It was. And that's my starter car. That's yeah, it. My car. It made noise if I turned to the left. My car, a my lot first car, kicked out of second gear when you were driving it. It had a broken rear tail light. It had four different wheels and hubcats. It smelled like mold because the window got left open yeah. in the mm -hmm. winter. Yep. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, yeah I do. Build character, though. It You're was not going to get a $100,000 car, though, for $740 a month. What are you going to get? Um, less. Yeah, much less. Yeah, uh, much you're less. Gonna that's why it's the average car payment. Like a fifty thousand dollar car, oh, okay. fifty, yeah. maybe sixty. It depends yeah. on the term. So he did. He, he, yeah. I use Ferrari as an example, but he teaches how to grab buy an old M five. Sure, you can buy sure. an an M five that's four or five years old for fifty to seventy k, and it be and it'll be and, you'll sell it as long as you don't drive. Yeah, it yeah. Time. So so even though his his whole thing is exotic car hacks, he teaches Ferraris, Lamborghinis, all this other stuff. But he'll even teach you how to get into an M five or a Mercedes GT and like these cars. I mean, all these markets, you know, all markets have this element where you, if you go in and understand them. That's right. This is why I find it. This is how I got sucked into his content, and I've consumed a lot of his stuff because it's been very interesting for me to watch and understand, like how to target right the right car and look for specific specs and like just the education uh, about it. Is so if you're into that stuff, watch his cars. It's a really cool follow. If you're not, then it's not a big deal. But I thought I'd share with the audience because I. What's his tag? Uh, I create millionaires is his IG, and then his YouTube channel is Exotic Car Hacks. By now, you know that probiotics can really improve your health. It's good for gut health. It can help reduce inflammation. In some cases, helps with things like anxiety and depression. This is actually backed by studies. But the question is, which probiotic do you go with? There's so many on the market. Well, the only one we work with is Seed. They're the best probiotic in the world. Hands down, they're ahead of everyone else. They even show how their probiotic reaches the target tissues in the body. No other probiotic can do this. Anyway, Go through our link, get yourself a discount. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump. Get 25% off your first month's order of Seed's daily symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is David from Mexico. What's up, David? What's going on, What's David? What's happening, Dave? Hey, boys. It's good to be back. Hey, hey. Yeah, good right. to see you again, man. What's going Great on? Great to be back. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I've been uh, um, pretty excited to, to get back in touch with you guys. Uh, I wanted to say that. Well, I've been listening to you guys for a long, long ass time, ever since the, the first episode, all the way back to the bajazzled <laughs> things and, you know, oh, yeah. the the old stuff. Yeah. Um, I got every single one of your programs, even, even Muscle Mommy. I don't plan to be a Muscle Mommy, but, <laughs> but you got it, you know? Um, You're committed. I like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And, of course, it always comes useful when I have to, to program for my wife, uh, so to my beautiful wife. Shout out to my wife. Uh, but I love you guys. I love all the stuff that, that you guys put out, and I'm pretty excited to support you guys. The, the information that you guys put out is amazing. But, well, to the question now. Um, a little bit of context uh, uh, before I ask the question. Uh, I was planning to do like a year-long uh, mass-gaining, bulking um, year, and Sal suggested to run, well, the, the programs that I was planning to run, Sal suggested the order, all time, then power lift, then anabolic advance, then strong. All time, by the way, uh, the last time that I called you, I asked you guys for that program. And as it turned out, you were already cooking it. So as soon as it uh, as it went out, I got it. And it's an amazing program. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's one of my top awesome. three, along with power lift and strong. Yeah. All right. Um, we got some good ones. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. 
So the, the plan was to do like a year bulk or a year of mass gaining. But as you guys always know, you have to change gears from time to time. I was getting a bit chunky. So right now I'm doing uh, suspension and then I'm going to go back to strong. And my question has to do with, uh, with the process of cutting. I know that the best way to cut is to first increase your metabolic rate and increase your calories. But when you go to the actual cutting, what is like the best way to go about it, you know, <clears throat> to, uh, to, to cut two to 300 calories for a couple of weeks and then uh, cut another two to 300 or to just go straight 500 calories into a cut, then do like a maintenance week or to go like a drastic 800 cut and then uh, fall back to preserve muscle during the cutting process. And uh, is it a good idea also to introduce a bit of cardio in maybe the last week uh, of the cutting before the maintenance to just speed things up a little bit and then just go back to, to the regular steps, no cardio, just lifting. What is like the best process to do this? David, give me an idea of where you're currently, because the great question uh, and there is a lot of possibilities and answers. I think the way I would decide would be based off of where my metabolic rate is currently, right? So if I have a lot more room to play with, I can be more, I can use more aggressive types of cuts and bounce into that. If you are at a place where, uh, you know, like I'd say a guy like your size was only eating, say like 2,500 calories a day, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd probably try and keep you closer to like a maintenance and just slowly lean out and cut because of how low you're. So where are your calories at right now? Right now, well, my maintenance is about, I don't know, 32, 3300, uh, something like that. Uh, I've been like increasing calories and right now I'm in a bit of a cut doing the suspension training program. So my cutting right now is at about 2500 and I'm steadily losing weight. Uh, but right now, well, when I finish uh, suspension, I'm going to go back to strong and increasing calories again. So my guess will be around uh, 3800 or something like that. So, you're, yeah, I still, I, I think I have room to play. You're actually on the right track. Yeah, I don't know if I would change what you're doing. I think what you did is great. 2,500 from, from where you were at 32, that's fine. You're following another pro, a different program. You change the programming. That's great to do when you go into a cut. And then after four weeks of that, reverse diet for a little bit and then go back into a cut. I think you're 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 right on track. All right. And what about the, the example for when people cut like, I don't know, 800 or so calories and then just increase them a little bit just to preserve muscle, but still be in a deficit. Is that like a good idea when I'm uh, doing so high calories? Or? <clears throat> you're, you're, you're advanced enough, you're high enough calories that you could play with that. And I, and, I, right. and I think that you're at a level where I think it's totally okay to met, like have a week where you cut 1500 calories a day and just, and let right. it for one week and then see how you feel. Now, what tends to happen, and everybody's different, but somebody might do that and they feel like, man, I didn't lose any more body fat than I normally than, than I normally do. And then on top of that, my energy was really low and I didn't like how I felt in my workouts. And so that might be too much. Or you might actually see like a really great response and you notice, man, I feel good. So, I mean, I would, I would let you play. If you were a client of mine, I'd say, hey, let's do that this week. Let's just go for a week. Let's do a really hard cut for one week, see how you feel afterwards, and then we'll get back up to more of a maintenance and, and run for there for a couple of weeks. So uh, absolutely run it and see how you feel. Yeah, the big, one of the biggest determining factors with this, David, is, is how many calories you're currently eating. If I'm working with somebody and their calories are not that high uh, for their size. That's right, can't do that. Then, yeah, I'm not going to do, yeah. I'm not going to cut. Um, you know, more aggressively, it's going to be a smaller cut. But if your calories are up there, you got more room to play with. Now, why is that? Well, when you start to get too low, the body is more interested in paring muscle down. That's right. Once things yeah, start to get, yeah, once things start to get a, a bit too low. Now, how do you know if if you should bump it up a little bit? Like you gave the example, someone cuts down eight hundred or whatever, and then oh, I'm going to go up a couple hundred. I like to base that off of performance. One of the one of the uh, one of the good determiners of whether or not the calories have been cut too much is if you just notice really big drops in performance. It's just like you're tired in the gym, you're not recovering, strength starts to decrease. I mean, you should notice somewhat of a flattening or maybe a decrease in performance, but not a drastic one where you're going to the gym, you're like, oh my God, I can't train like I used to at all. That's when I have some people say, okay, let's let's bump the calories a little. I think they're too much, it's too aggressive for you. At the moment. And that, again, that's just based off of performance. But the higher somebody's calories are at maintenance, uh, for people watching this, meaning the higher the person's metabolic rate is, the more the cut can, the more of a cut we can do 
without net, without sacrificing muscle. Yeah, and that was that's exactly was my reasoning behind uh, switching to suspension because all the, all of the other programs as amazing as they are and as much as I love to lift heavy and uh, probably you all guys can identify with this. I need a, a bit of a change of pace and maybe not do like such a heavy ass program yeah. like strong when I was in a cut. I don't like to lose a lot of performance, but I, I still do want to to lose a little bit of body fat. Yeah, bro, I, you're I on think, the right track. Yeah, I literally, yeah. I knew you did that for that reason. Right. I think that's a smart yeah. strategy. Yeah, that, I, th I love right. to do that, right? Because you're not really, like, suspension, you're not, oh, man, my bench is down by 100 pounds. You're not even thinking about that. Exactly, exactly. So it's a great it's a great mental game. It's so, also lower volume, lower intensity yeah. than a program like yeah, Strong smart, or Smart advanced. strategy, bro. You're doing, you're doing really good. It's the opposite of what the average person would think to do. Most people think go on an aggressive cut and then increase volume, increase intensity, which is the opposite of of what you want no, to do exactly. if you want to preserve muscle. So you're, you're, I mean, actually doing really yeah. amazing. I, I, I like right, your idea you. though about like, why not have a week where you do like l really low calorie for one week? It, and the, the, where that gets uh, an issue, two, one, the Sal said it already, where if you were already low calorie, like I would never tell you that if you, like I said, you're at 2,500 calories. I would never say, hey, cut 1,500. That's ridiculous. Right. But because you're at a high enough number, you can do that and still be in a healthy, safe place and just don't do it for a long period of time where if other people do is they, they drop the calories that much and, oh, they see some good results. So they're like, oh, let me do it a second week, a third week, a fourth week. Just yeah, move exactly. out of it. But nothing yeah, wrong with the same thing as, as, as when you're bulking, right? Yes. Just, just don't, as, as you say, just don't eat like an asshole. And that's, that's right. It. That's right. That's right. Same, <laughs> yeah. same thing. So same is same. no, I think you, I think you're uh, on the, <laughs> on the right path, but uh, I would encourage you to kind of play with that. I think it would be good for you to have a week where you just really low calories, even if you do notice a little bit of a performance decrease in the gym, like that's kind of expect or expected from something like that. Just get out of it. Just move out of it after a week. Don't stay in it for extended period of time. Yeah, and actually that's why I also love to run suspension on a cut because uh, the, the the decreasing body weight, of course, helps me to to run right. that that specific program. So yeah, great no. great strategy. Yeah. I mean, oh, your strategy. your insight is remarkable, David. You're, you're doing pretty yeah. well. I'd like to say it's because you listen to our our, our podcast. Are you <laughs> yeah, you a trainer? Are you a trainer or a coach or or is, is this your no program? no no? I'm not a trainer, not even a coach. I, I mean, I coach my my wife and my my, my father, my mom has recently started to lift weights because she has a bit of a osteopenia and she has been having amazing results but I'm, I'm not a coach i just love the the fitness process and I, I i love it i've been lifting for since i was 14 15 and i love to learn uh, from whatever topic i'm, inst I'm interested in but yeah, you're yeah on, i'm not a coach all the things that make a good yeah, coach yeah, by you're, the way you're on point. intuitive with it for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. on point all right well, right. thanks a lot, guys. All right, David. You got it, man. It's been it's been amazing. Yeah, 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 we appreciate your support. Of course. Thank you. He has been with us for a while. I know him and his name and everything. I know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's important to make this point. We've said it before on the show, but it's very important uh, to understand this, that the, the, the instinct that people have, which is wrong, is when they go on a cut to increase their workout volume and time and frequency and intensity. So like, I want to burn body fat, so now I've got to ramp things up. That's actually the last thing you want to do because the reduction in nutrient intake, which is a reduction in calories, now has made the recovery and adaptation process more challenging. The last thing you want to do is make is increase the amount of damage you put on your body. Now, someone may be thinking, but I want to burn more calories. The calories you burn while you exercise are inconsequential. Don't worry about it. Your body adapts to that anyway. Don't consider that at all. Think of the stimulus that you're providing through your exercise. And when you're in a cut – your recovery's already compromised. Don't add more exercise when you do that. I love the strategy of moving to MAP suspension when you know you're in a cut like that. Just a great, great program. <clears throat> great. And, you know, and it's less about like, oh, building muscle. In the, it's more like the, the psychological game that you play with yourself by doing that because it's like, oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not worried about my bench. I'm not worried about my deadlift. I'm not worried about my squad. I'm doing a move. I'm doing a program that's so unique and different. Mm -hmm. And so the the motivation to stay with it, keep doing it, such a yeah. it's a, such a smart. And it's one player. of the best ones too to reinforce a lot sure. of stability around yeah. your joints and you know fill a lot of gaps uh, in your training anyway. So it's a it's a great. I mean, he was so like intuitive with that. Yeah, and and, and one more point. He mentioned this with the with the losing you know body weight. Uh, there are some strength training exercises that you automatically get better at when you get lighter and that's body weight exercises yep. so if you're doing map suspension which yeah. is body weight exercises you get stronger you actually are able to do yeah. more reps uh while you're in a cut like you can't tell me that's not encouraging 
Our next caller is Anthony from Colorado. What's up, Anthony? How you doing, Anthony? What's up, hey, dude? Guys. How can we help you? Yeah, well, one, thanks for having me on. I really respect each of you. So just thank you so much. Really, really respect y'all. So thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, man. Um, so I just want to, yeah, my question is really about, so just brief little context. I just completed a MAPS Anabolic um, about a month ago. I've been with you guys for about over a year now. And during that time, I, you know, really gained about 10 to, 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. Wow. So really great, uh, really great work. I, I extended it out a little bit. And, um, and right now, uh, and the way I did it is for, I started with phase two and I did more maintenance calories and then phase three, I did bulking. And then phase one is when I did cutting. And I think I had re heard y'all recommend that in terms of, uh, uh, and so that's, that's the way I chose to go about it. And now that I've ended that, I'm doing more of a, a hit program for the summer. So I'm really excited. And my plan is to go into, uh, the athletic performance program starting next month. But this is my, my question. My, conf my question is more about confusion around long-term programming and just what are your recommendations around coordinating nutrition, around bulking and cutting um, when it comes to long-term programming going through the, uh, in these cycles? I think you don't have to always be in a cut or a bulk. I mean, you can run, I mean, you look pretty fit. I mean, I, I, obviously I can't see all of you, but you look like you're a pretty fit guy already. And you, what might serve you is actually to just, you know, if you're always the type where you feel like, oh, I'm either cutting, I'm bulking, and you're super focused on the cat where the calories are, you probably would serve you to run a program or two where you actually take off from that and you go, you know what? I'm just going to eat intuitively, eat when I'm hungry, make whole food choices and see how my body responds. Um, I, and, and normally with a client who's as organized as you are and has been consistent with this cutting, bulking through all these phases and has seen the benefits of doing that, you're the type, especially if you're in a pretty good place, uh, body fat percentage, aesthetically where you're at, you feel good. I would probably do that with you. Say, hey, you know what, Anthony, let's, for this program, Let's not cut or bulk. Let's actually just go through the program, eat intuitively, and then give me your feedback on how you feel. And then we'll assess at the end of the program and see what happens. A lot of times what happens to someone like that, like this are surprised like on the results they get and they weren't even cutting or bulking. They were just listening to their body and eating when they're eating when they feel like they need to eat and making good choices and they end up getting as in as as good a shape or better shape just by doing that. So I think that would be a good exercise for someone like you because you've already done this enough times to understand what a cool a cut is, what a bulk is to see how they benefit you, all the different programs. I mean, you might want to consider something like that now. Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, all the programs, uh, <laughs> you know, are performance and or, uh, muscle, uh, focused. Okay. So cutting or bulking in any of them is, is going to be okay. So long as the training and the programming is appropriate, for you in the context of what's going on, just keep in mind when you're to cut your ability to handle, um, volume and intensity goes down a bit. Mm -hmm. So I think what you did with, with, with phase one, two, and three, I think was smart because phase three is the highest volume, most intensity type, you know, aspect of the, of that program. And so it's probably wise to not go in a cut or at least an aggressive cut when you're doing that. And then phase one, you know, would have been perfect for that. So I think that's a good approach. But ultimately, um, you know, all things considered, it really doesn't make a big difference. It's, it's all based off of what you want to accomplish. Got it. And I also, so Anthony, I think there's a lot of value in you challenging yourself to do the opposite of what you already currently have done too. Because why, and why you hear us always, because like, people, that's one of the most popular questions. Like, hey, should, when, what program should I cut on and which one should I bulk and what phase? And it's like, well, that, it depends. Some people do really well cutting when they're lifting low reps and really heavy other people don't do well at all they feel like they lose so much strength it's discouraging and yeah. so i think there's a lot of benefit with you actually doing the complete opposite of what you've already currently done and then you going oh you know what i like that that actually felt good i felt i didn't feel like i lost a lot of strength or realizing like oh wow yeah i definitely know that i don't like to cut when i'm doing that mm -hmm. phase of a program so, you know, where you're kind of at in your journey, I think there's a lot of value in experimenting and doing the opposite of what you've already currently done and or having a phase or a program where you're just like, hey, I'm going to I'm not going to actually cut or bulk. I'm going to just intuitively eat and see how my body responds to that. Got it. I think for me, there's I've been so disciplined. There's some fear around not counting my calories, oh, not wow. getting the right amount of protein. So that's 
that's what I'm noticing more internally about the challenge of the intuitive eating component. So, so yeah. e okay, so even more reason why I would mm -hmm. want to do that with you because I can tell you're a fit guy already. You've already done this well, and then it, it it's obvious that you that's something that you've been really diligent about. I would want to challenge that. I'd want like, hey, this is our challenge, Anthony. Let's see. And it doesn't mean that we can't move back and go back to tracking and calculating. But if I was your coach and we were doing this journey together. That would be my next challenge for you is like, okay, let's run a program and let's challenge ourselves not to track and let's, let's see how you do. And, and I think that would be a good exercise for you to do for your relationship with food and tracking and things. You know, it's a good segue for that, Anthony, is to, uh, watch your diet and how it correlates or corresponds to performance in the gym and how you feel. So when you're working out, you know, it's drop some performance. Okay, I might need to eat a little more or eat more of this macro or, or that one. Ooh, now I feel better. Or, oh, I'm getting a little inflamed and stiff. Okay, what's in my diet? Let me see if I swap this out for that. It's a nice segue away from just counting calories and macros and, and focusing on aesthetics. It's not perfect, but it's a better, it's a nice direction. Because then you can get more, you start to get in tune to more of the intuitive approach, which is really just based off of how you feel things like digestion and health and sleep and all that stuff. But performance is easier, easier to measure, you know, strength, stamina, recovery, that kind of stuff. Got it. Yeah. And I did do, and just following all your, your guys, uh, guidance, I did carb cycling over the program of anabolic as well. How'd you so like that? All day is really, I really enjoyed psychologically, but physically as well, having carbs and then on days where I wasn't exercising, just needed to cut that, but still keeping protein relatively high throughout the whole program. Awesome. As well. mm, That's great, good. man. What, uh, what program are you moving into next? What are you about to do? Is it hit? You well, said? since I did so much of the anabolic, I want to, and I'm, I'm, I feel like the hit program is a really good transition to doing the athletic performance program a little bit more of, I think it's some of more the unilateral power and explosion, if, if I remember it right. Is that correct? Yeah, that's not a bad choice at all. Symmetry would be another one that would be yeah, good. That's, yeah, I was thinking symmetry. But yeah, that's because it's totally like a, a break from from doing all the bilateral movements. And then, you know, it's it's a good change of pace, too. That's the one I would like to, to cut in when I choose to do that. So just to kind of change up your focus completely. Do you have symmetry, Anthony? I don't have symmetry, no. Right, we'll send that to you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. You got it, man. Sweet. Uh, well, thank you for your time, everyone. It was, uh, I really, again, respect all of you and what you do. And I've learned so much for y'all. So thank y'all so thank much. You, you got it, brother. Right on, dude. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad you asked them more questions because it starts to make sense yeah, a little bit. Of, yeah. More insight. Yeah, I mean, sure. tell me after he said that, does, does that not strike you as like the client? That's exactly what you yep. do with him, right? Yep. Like yep. you, I could tell that he was, you could tell he was fit. Like I could tell he's really fit. So it's not like we need to probably move yeah. anywhere body fat yeah, percentage yeah, yeah, yeah. wise. Yeah. And then the way he was so diligent about cutting and bulking in this, and that's where his question was going. It's like, you know what? Sounds to me, what you probably should do is neither one. Like, yeah, break, yeah, like, from it. Yeah, yeah. Run through, run through a program where you intuitively eat. You mm -hmm. know, what's funny about about uh, clients that I've done this with too, many times they end up getting the best results mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, by letting go. Of oh that, yeah, you know. Which, by the way, <laughs> that's not for everybody. No, I'm not saying that for no, everybody. Most people are, are always well, first. You need to be diligent. Yes, right? most people. Need, but in. when somebody has gone to this level and has figured this out, one of the best things to do is to actually get them to let go a little bit and just and listen to their body. Yeah. yeah, and to. You know, when you, like you said, when you feel inflamed, reduce calories or have a fast day in the yeah. middle of your training, who cares? You know what I'm saying? And then go back. And then, so I, I think that he would benefit from doing that. Sorry to interrupt you right now. Maps GLP one is available. Brand new program for those of you taking a GLP one. It's a workout. We'll help you with your diet, your supplements, behavior modifications. It's the only workout program designed for people on a GLP one on the market. Of course, it's amazing because it's brand new. Get it for $70 off. Plus get two free eBooks. The first one is the ultimate medication guide for patients and practitioners. The second one is the intuitive nutrition guide. Go to mapsglp1.com, use the code GLP70, get $70 off, plus those free ebooks. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Avery from Texas. What's up, Avery? What's going on, Avery? How can we help you? Hey, guys, doing well. Um, it's an honor to be here. Really appreciative of everything that you've done for me as I begin my career as a personal trainer within the last four to six months or so. Um, question I have for you guys here today I'm a 28 year old male, 6'4, 201 pounds. And according to an in body, um, about five to 6% body fat. I'm a NASM and mind pump certified trainer who believes that I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, but I wanted to take my training results to the next level. And after listening to your content for a couple of years, years now, I decided to work with Transcend to optimize muscle growth, recovery, 
for some upcoming um, tr- volume increases in my training. I'm one week into peptide therapy, currently taking BPC-157, IGF-1, and Tessamorlin. Prior to beginning those peptides, however, I did work with Transcend to review my blood work markers and was surprised to see that my testosterone results were um, pretty low. Thinking I was doing everything right and feeling good, when in reality, it didn't seem like that was the case. Uh, testosterone, or excuse me, my, my total testosterone was 160, and my free testosterone was 4.4. Um, so pretty much in the floor from what I thought was ideal, about 800 to 1,200. But again, from my vantage point, I was doing just about everything right to optimize my health, um, trying to practice what I preach with my clients, eating a whole food diet, high in protein, easily eating 300 grams of protein a day, averaging uh, about seven and a half hours of sleep per night, stress levels are low, um, outside of just the fact that I wanted to pr- put pressure on myself to perform in my new career. Um, I do a lot of small things right as well. I mean, listening to you guys I have juve, red light therapy, cold plunge, sauna, um, the one area that I feel like I could improve, but again, listening to my bottle body, excuse me, is with some potential overtraining. Uh, so currently right now I strength train three times per week, um, cycling through maps program currently in phase two of symmetry. And within the last month or so, I have increased my cardio simply for the fact that I'm training for a marathon, not because I enjoy running, but simply for, um, the ability to kind of. That, that mental toughness. So right now what that looks like is one long run a week, roughly 10 to 15 miles, and then two shorter runs somewhere between three to six miles for each of those. So trying not to exceed 25 to 30 miles within the week. Um, after reviewing those testosterone results with my wellness specialist with Transcend, they recommended in clomiphene and HCG to improve my testosterone levels. Um, but before proceeding with that, I wanted to touch base with you guys, knowing you're the experts and kind of dive into maybe recommendations that you have for me to get those levels up. Avery, how do you feel? You haven't seen I feel great. Okay. Yeah. I'm, my matters. performance in the gym has been, has been good. Um, seeing some strength gains again, sleep's good. If I feel that I need a recovery day, I'll take it or even a, a full week. So I'm not afraid to kind of scale back if needed. Any symptoms of low testosterone, like a uh, low libido, drive, motivation? No, we're roaring there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, what's interesting about this, so lots of things affect libido. Do you think, um, Sal, this could happen? Do you think it's possible? He When did, did you, like, he, like, test after, like, a day where he ran really, like, It's really low. And yeah. then, I know 160 is yeah. really low. But you don't you don't think it would it could affect, like, his timing? Even if it was half, okay. right? The, 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 then you would have been at 320, which is still yeah. at the cusp. Yeah. But you don't have any signs of low testosterone, which is interesting to me. Um, now, there's a lot of factors that can affect things like libido and drive, not just testosterone. Although typically, generally, you will see a crushed libido with uh, with a one you know sixty total or four point four um, free testosterone. I- any changes from now and how you feel versus, let's say, when you were fifteen, sixteen years old? No, not that I can think of. Again, okay. my strength and performance in the gym has been really good. Okay. Energy throughout the day is good. Okay, I'm not dragging. The only thing that just doing some research, my carbon takes pretty low, um, like less than 200 grams, and I'm getting well over 300 grams of protein. Oh. I don't know if that's going to impact things much at all. There's you- also there's also androgen receptor density, which varies from individual to individual. Where someone with lower testosterone could have the testosterone could be far more effective in that person because of the androgen receptor density that they have. Nonetheless, here's the deal. Um, it's good that you don't have any signs of low testosterone, so that's very promising. But a number that low is pretty outside the range. I think 300 is the lowest uh, before even a general practitioner will say, hey, you know, something's going on. I would. You should also get your fertility tested just to see if there's anything uh, going on there. But here's what I would do if I were you. And it's good that you feel good. What it makes me think is you could feel a lot better. So however good you feel now, you're in a you're there's there's five gears above that uh, that you you could probably reach with a more optimal optimal testosterone. First thing I would do is is, is not do the marathon. Uh, I would not do the marathon, and I would get my body fat up. Uh, low body fat in men can crush testosterone. That's pretty predictable. Five percent body fat is really low. I would get your 10% is still lean. 10% is still, you got a six pack. 
I would bump my calories and get my body fat percentage up. I would cut all the running and cardio out completely. I would focus just on the strength training. And then clomiphene and HCG both uh, send a signal to the body to produce more testosterone on its own. Now, it is an, an external signal. So the risk is when you go off, you just drop back down to where you were before. And it depends on the individual in terms of how uh, how it affects them, how, how, how effective it is. But in clomiphene, uh, it, it binds to the estrogen receptor. Okay, so people are like, what's that have to do with testosterone? When a man's uh, body um, detects low estrogen, which is what it'll detect, which isn't the case, but by blocking the estrogen receptor, your body thinks it's not producing enough estrogen. And one of the ways that it offsets that is it raises its testosterone because the way a man's body makes testosterone is it takes testosterone and converts it to estrogen. And then HCG mimics a hormone called luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone tells your testes to make more testosterone. So th that combination will get your body to naturally produce more testosterone. And then what the goal is, once they measure your, your blood again, they're like, oh, cool, we got you up to whatever, 700, 800, who knows how, how well you respond. Then what they'll do is they'll say, okay, we're going to take you off, and then we'll test you again to see if you're able to maintain these, these higher levels. And there's some decent success rate with that anecdotally from people I've talked to. And, and oftentimes you'll see a raise in improvement in fertility and testosterone levels that stick. If it drops down again, back down to 160, then I would talk to them again about what's going on and start working specifically with a hormone specialist to see if this is even something you should work on at your age. But I do think for sure, regardless of where your testosterone's at, that maintaining 5% body fat and and training for I don't care who you are if you're if you're a man and you train for a marathon you will see a drop in testosterone it's pretty consistent okay unless you went from shit health to good health which in which case you may see an increase but typically you'll see a drop so I would not do the marathon and I would bump my calories and your goal is yes to get stronger but your goal really is get your body fat up it's it's so low it's pretty hard to find a man at five percent body fat with optimal testosterone levels, unless they're they're not that, supplementing not that, exogenous. Not that, yeah. not that low. Once but, you get below six, like you're definitely in that area. Oh, below eight, typically you see a yeah, drop. Yeah, yeah. and those body fat percentage results come from an in-body So that electrical impedance scale. I do have, obviously, some hesitations on the accuracy there. I sent in a picture after the fact. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. I feel I'm not that low. I feel like I'm probably closer to eight or nine, just knowing you what. See, you, got, you got abs? Depending on the day, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I would still get. I would yeah, still get the body the fat. Do you have the pick done? Yeah, I don't think he does. Uh, yeah, I would uh, get the. Uh, I would still get the body fat up, um, and cut the cut the marathon training, in combination with what they recommended. Go through that process and then see what happens, and then see how you feel. So, you know, when they test you, like, wow, your testosterone is is you know quadrupled. Do I notice a difference? Uh, do I feel any different? Do I feel any better? What, what you'll probably feel going from 160 to 500, 600, 700 or above is a very – if your libido is okay now at 160, it's going to go through the roof. If your energy is good now at 160, it's going to go through the roof. If your recovery is okay now, it's going to go through the roof. It's probably what you'll notice by raising – by the way, I'm, I was like that. Like I didn't notice a difference until I went on testosterone replacement. I tested a 260-something, not that much higher than you. And my libido was okay, so I didn't really know I should get tested. I thought I was all right. When I went on replacement, and of course I'm much older than you, um, when I went on replacement, it was like, oh, wow, this is very different. Okay, I could tell. But had you asked me then if I thought I had low testosterone, I would have said no. And then um, as I bump my calories up and knock out the running, how long would you – say I wait until retesting to ideally see those levels come back up to uh, a more th reasonable number. They, they'll they probably have you do something like 60 days, something like that, 30, 60 days before retesting. Uh, but you need to talk to them to see what they recommend on the protocol. And I'm about at 33, 3,500 calories roughly. We're just do like a three to 500 calorie bump yep, up. Yep. Yep. That yeah. sounds good. At least that. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it, fellas. Yeah, you got yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah. Keep, hey, keep us posted, Avery. I want to. Yeah, get actually, I, I would love. I would love a follow up. Yeah, yeah. I want to know what happens. Yeah, because I was. I mean, like I said, I felt so good, and to see that number was just pretty demoralizing. You know, and I would but talk that I you talk to them too and say, is there any potential that this is a mistake in this test? Because yeah. I'm. I mean, it's so rare. 
to have that number of a test. Now, 160 is lower than what you would see, I think, an 80-year-old. <clears throat> so it's so rare to feel fine with libido and energy and to be that low. Um, so I would That's even call I him. I was wondering like the timing of his test. And, if and be like, it, yeah, should I just do another test just to no see, symptoms with you know, it, yeah. what's going on? Um, and then I would, I would, I would also check fertility just to be sure if you, especially if you plan on being a father one day. I mean, nonetheless though, uh, increasing body fat and pumping calories and reducing the marathon run stuff should help. It should, will be yeah. a positive thing no matter what. And it, it's worth experimenting with that anyways, even if the test was awful yeah. or whatever. I think that, and then see what happens from there. But I, I agree. I think it, it seems so low to not have any symptoms. Although I do remember when Sal was the same way too. If you would have asked him, he would have swore up and down that his, he was super healthy, felt really good. Testosterone was totally fine. And then he took that test and realized how low he was. So you could just be a, a, have adapted to that. Low and I'll tell you, time. going having my testosterone's in the upper limit now, very different than how I felt before. I thought I felt good before, but it's a whole different ballgame. And it, what's the estrogen marker um, that I would have reviewed in my – is it the estradiol? Yeah. That was the um, eighteen point six. If that means anything to you, which they shared that was high compared to where my testosterone was, but the ratio wasn't good. But that's because right, your exactly. testosterone's so low. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Thank you, fellas. You Appreciate it, all the uh, information that you put out, and you've really helped me to to be successful here in the first few months of my my new career as a trainer. Oh, that's oh, great, man. brother. Awesome. Glad you're in the coaching program, Avery. Yeah, I loved it. I. Flew through it. it. Took me just a week or two. Awesome. Oh, beautiful! And awesome. and, and, and definitely let us know what happens. I, I can't wait to hear what happens with yeah, you. Yeah, we'll see you in there. Thanks, fellas. Much love. All right, All right brother. That's uh, that's not typical. Yeah, yeah it's so, so is weird. It, you you don't think it's possible to have been like uh, done a fifteen mile run and then tested the next day and it did it it's possible yeah, crash no that much. Sleep it's or, possible. Yeah, right. He's, because he, it's really off. It's he's really on, he's pretty low calorie too. You know, consider he's a six four two hundred pound guy training and running. Yeah, uh, thirty two hundred calories. is What he said, something like that. Thirty five. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. And and that low of of body fat percentage. That's that's a pretty low calorie uh, calorie for him. Um, I don't know, low calorie. He did say in body. Like I wonder if uh, he's higher than that because those in body, especially thought, the leaner he, you get. Didn't he say he sent a picture to Doug? Yeah. I didn't get it. Huh. Probably sent it to Jerry and she didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, because then we'll be able to tell. You know? Yeah, I mean, you'll know if he's 5% is lean. You could tell. Yeah, he's yeah. Probably, Someone's 5%, yeah, there's yeah, a look. But yeah. even if he is, though, like, like, let's say it's off and he's like seven or eight or still, nine. Still even. too lean. Still low. Yeah, it's yeah. like, so no matter what. I mean, it's not that far off. Those things, those things can be skewed, but they're not skewed five, six percent. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're the leaner you are, the more that that's possible. To go from five to ten percent on that that scale, it's not that much body fat. It's not that much. Think about it this way: you're 200 pounds, 10 percent body fat. It means you have 20 pounds of body fat. If you have, if you have five percent body yeah. fat, it's 10. And those those scans can be off quite yeah, a bit. Full, being fully hydrated or totally. dehydrated, uh -huh. it's not like when you're 20 percent. You know, actually, yeah. the higher you go, the more it gets off too. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's weird to be that low if that's consistently where he's at and to be like, yeah, I got a good libido. That almost never, I mean, like I said, that was me. Yeah, I would test it a few times. Yeah. I mean, but when I went on, when I went on TRT, and the reason why I went on TRT was mine was really low and I'm, I was also 40. But when I went on TRT, like I, my libido was a whole nother ball game. It was a whole nother ball game. So yeah. Next caller is Letitia from Pennsylvania. Hi, Letitia. Hi. How can we help you? Um, so I just have a question. I've been kind of looking at some of you guys' programs lately, trying to figure out, um, what would be the best fit for me. A little bit of a backstory. I've been pretty involved in fitness for, I don't know, a really long time, at least like 10 years. I've done bodybuilding. And then after I got tired of bodybuilding, I did powerlifting for a long time. And then I did CrossFit. Um, and then I kind of took a step back from exercise because I wanted to get pregnant. So I had a baby. I'm 16 months postpartum and I've kind of just been doing a bunch of random like CrossFit style workouts and walking a ton, probably like 18,000 to 20,000 steps a day. I kind of just like dove headfirst back into fitness and I lost a ton of weight. I'm very, very lean right now. Probably like, I don't know, 14% body fat. Anyways, I just want to do less and I want to build some muscle and kind of get out of this mental thing of needing to do so much movement all the time. Um, but I don't really know where to go from here because it feels a little, 
the cortisol high, feels a little bit addictive. And every time I try to scale back, I get scared and I keep going. Good awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good really awareness. Good. Are you, are you, um, you're not breastfeeding anymore? I'm not. Okay. I did, but I'm not anymore. Okay. And did you get your, is, are you getting a regular period? Um, no. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're, I'll just laugh. I mean, I already yeah. thought, I already know what, what's happening, but I wanted to ask that just kind of cherry on top. You're, you're, you're definitely overtrained and under eating. And I know in, in your email you sent us, you're t saying that you're eating around 2000 calories a day, most days. So you, yeah. you're pushing your body and right now it's in survival mode, which is why you get that wired energy that you feel. Yeah. But what follows, if you keep pushing down this path is going to be a massive crash. That's hard to come out of. And that looks like depression. It looks like uh, I'm so fatigued, irritability, hair starts weight to fall gain, out. All kinds of stuff. Weight gain, a lot of things. And that's 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 where you're going around. The road that you're on right now leads to this terrible place that's really hard to come out of. So we want to get out of this before you hit that. Because once you hit that, and then you got to climb out of a hole. You're a little bit of in a hole now, but we can we can do this. But we're gonna have to reduce your activity dramatically and feed your body. And the best thing that you can aim for right now is just strength in the gym. That's going to be the, one of the best metrics that's going to tell you if you're doing everything right. Anabolic it's, and walking. That's it. Anabolic and walking. Ma right MAPS person. anabolic, walking. 18 to 20,000 steps is a lot, uh, but okay, if you want to keep that up. I would like to see it more like around maybe 15 at the most. Well, it's going to drop because she's not. you're not allowing her to run anymore. She ran four to six miles. So if you get if you cut out the running, she oh, yeah. should yeah. reduce that. That's it. MAPS anabolic, no running, and let's reverse diet you. Now, the last part of your email is, I'm not sure how my body will respond. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to get stronger. You're going to gain a little bit of body fat, which you need to. 14% is too low to maintain. You're going to get your period back, and you're going to feel way better than you feel right now is what's going to happen. Here's what's going to get in your way. Uh-oh, I'm gaining weight on the scale. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm still right now. I need to do something. What do I need to do to keep myself busy? Uh-oh, I'm afraid. What, what's going to happen? So yeah. those are the demons that are going to challenge you as you do this, but if you stay on the path, they're, you're going to come out great. Uh, what, I, what I'd like to do for you is I, I'd like, Doug, to send over MAPS Anabolic, if you don't have that already, which I don't think you do. We'll get you started on that. Uh, the walking recommendation when you feel the need, I need to do something, go for a walk, that's fine. Or even better, if you can discipline yourself to do yoga or mobility and stretch, that would be great. And then I want Doug to put you in our private forum also so we can keep an eye on you. So if you just check in with us and let us know how the process is going, that because the, the hardest part of this will be the, the mental struggle. It won't be physically what you're capable of doing. It'll be more, can you stick with it uh, through this process? Because you do need to see it all the way through. Uh, otherwise, your body will get louder. It'll start to talk to you even more. Yeah. Now, one more thing that might help you when you're doing this, because it's going to be tough, because uh, this is an addictive uh, cycle, okay? It's not that unlike other addictive cycles that we can get into, and with any addictive cycle, when you initially break it, there is a withdrawal, okay? So what you may notice initially for the first few weeks or month is a uh, eruption of symptoms. Ooh, I, I, what am I going to do with myself? I'm a little more anxious. I'm angry. Like, I need to do something. So it's going to be more challenging before it becomes better. But then as you start to heal, as your body gets stronger, as your hormones start to get more in balance, you start to feel good, then it's going to be a lot easier. So you're going to have to kind of tough it out for the first, I would say, 14 to 30 days. And just keep that in mind. And, and the reason why I'm telling you this is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let you know ahead of time so that when it happens, you can remember this conversation. You can say, okay, Sal said he, this is going to happen, so I just got to tough it out. Well, and hopefully you take advantage of the free forum that I want to give you too and just, just stay in contact with us so we can be there to help support through this process, just checking in with us. Maybe that accountability piece will help, help, totally. help you get through it. Yes, that support is going to be important. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you. Okay. Leticia, real quick. You you kind of okay. knew what we were going to say, didn't you? Um, I've listened to a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you feel right now? It's it's I, it's already what I knew, what I knew you guys were going to say. I just kind of was hoping that you could give me a pointer for like which program to follow maybe. So, um, hopefully Maps Anabolic will be a good fit for me and I'll be able to just relax more, sleep more and take some more rest well it, it will it, be a good yeah. program for you but the hard part because you've already mentioned like you gravitate towards this kind of crossfit 
type of yeah, don't overdo the trigger sessions. That's one anything point. that can get your heart rate spiked. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, and this is the opposite. Which, by the way, and this is why I hope we check you check in with us, and I can talk to you. Is that the one of the hardest parts will be resting between the sets in this program, yep. and with some where we're at currently and your goals, uh, you can't rest too long. Okay. You can only rest too little. So you have to have that. You have to be almost competitive with yourself of like three minute rest between every set. Let yourself mm -hmm. rest between every single set and that heart rate come all the if way back If you fall down. in love with the strength gains, that'll help you a lot. Yeah. Cause then you'll, you got something to look forward to for sure. Are you scared? Um, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. We're with you. Yeah. That's good. I mean, that's, you're supposed to, there's a big change. So I get where you're at. Worked with a lot of people like you. I think you could totally do this. You could totally do this. You just got to go through that scary part. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You got we're, it. We're going to get you set up. We'll see you in the forum. All righty. Thank you guys. Thank All you. Right. What do you guys think? I know. Over you think she's going to do it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think like she's like, very nervous about she's it. like, fuck, you know, yeah. I know, I know I'm supposed to do that. But I mean, we'll know right away if she checks in with us. I mean, that's how you know if someone's going to fall. This through. is, see, listen, for people listening right now, like this is the real value of working with a trainer or a coach. A coach is a guide because you run into these challenges. You are going to stumble. You are going to fall. You are going to find yourself in these places where you don't want to do the right thing. And if you know it's the right thing to do, you don't want to do it. Or you're going to run into places where you don't know what to do. And to have an experienced, wise guide there that can predict what's going to happen, that can coach you through those tough spots, I mean, it's life-changing. And so, you know, I, I hope she's listening to us. And if, it, if, if it's feasible, hire a coach. Yeah. You, they can she, help she you. She could use some accountability in terms of just somebody reassuring her. Yes. Well, and for the coaches and trainers, like this is, this is a great uh, example of the type of stuff that we teach in our coaching program, right? This is something that you're not going to pick up with an NASM certification no. or a course like that, is teaching coaches and trainers how to do exactly that how to forecast for that client the potential pitfalls and the challenges that she may come because if she if you don't and that hits them and it blindsides them boy it's really hard to get them to push through yeah. that i don't care how derail good of, the whole program yeah i don't care how good of a trainer you think you are if you don't learn that skill to be able to do that with your people you lose these ones a lot yeah. they're more they're but it's real easy to take somebody who loves to work out, healthy, balanced, everything's all aligned, and you just got to guide yeah. them and work them out and, and keep them going. Like yeah, that's, one out of 100. That's, exactly. That's yeah. not the, the norm. That Normally ever. people are, are have these different challenges, and learning how to communicate to those people is paramount to the success of the client and you as a coach. And so this is the type of stuff that we dive into in the course. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.